Ms. Gill. Aye. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Mr. Reitinger. Yes. Ms. Ward. Yes. Mr. Webb. Here. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Would everyone please join us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, could I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. All right, thank you. Uh, we've got a motion and a second, unless it's a point of order. Actually, here, Lawrence, would you withdraw the motion so we can? Oh, well, no, uh, withdraw. oh sorry. Withdrawn. Please. Well, it, it actually is about the motion. So uh, my question is, is tonight just a work session or is it going to be a meeting where we're going to take votes? Because if we're going to take votes, then I'd like to offer an amendment to the agenda. Uh, no, tonight the idea was we will take public comment and have a work session, but there are no votes planned. Then and, and I, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we'll try this again. Uh, I move to adopt the agenda. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, if you all would indulge me before we move to public comment, I would just like to read an email that I sent to the... Uh, members of city council that I think everyone should be aware of. And to a certain extent, it's probably addressed to everybody in this room and, and up here on the dais. Members of city council, I assume you've all seen or at least heard about the emails of mine related to the budget that were obtained by FOIA and released in the past week. You all know me to varying degrees and I've worked with most of you for many years on issues ranging from my time in the library board and planning commission to the school board. More than a decade for some of you. You know that I'm blunt to a fault and sarcastic at times and frankly can sometimes say unfortunate and idiotic things when being blunt. My comments about the council being gutless, a member possibly lying, and calling for torches and pitchforks and lobbying for the budget fall into each of those categories and cross the line. I am very sorry for that. You deserve better from me in both writing and in person. I could say that, well, that was just an email to one person and I never meant it to become public and I could weasel, yes, but I'm not going to. If you have to eat crow, it tastes best warm. So I'm not gonna let it sit and fester. We all have a lot to do and you don't need my idiocy getting in the way of you and me doing that work. I hope you can forgive me and put this behind us as we all work together for the good of the overall city and schools. You're dedicated wholeheartedly to both. And I'm very thankful that you stood up and agreed to do what is in many ways a thankless job. Thank you for doing that. I'd like the opportunity to apologize to you in person over coffee, tea, or an appropriately adult beverage. Please reach out whenever you would like. I will be available at your convenience. I've already received answers from the mayor, another member of council as well. They both said, put it behind us. One said from one blunt speaker to another, just forget about it. And I'm going to reach out to the others and make sure that I know they received it and they understand that it is heartfelt indeed. So with that, we'll move on to public comment unless anybody has anything else. No? All right. In accordance with school board bylaws 2.30, the time for each speaker is limited to three minutes. Additional written statements may be submitted to the clerk for dissemination to board members and for the record. I would just remind everyone, please come up, state your name and address. You will get three minutes. I would ask whether you agree with someone or disagree with them. I don't need, we don't need to hear clapping or booing or anything. So we can move this along, hear everybody who wants to speak and then get down to our work session to work on cutting the budget, which is why we're all here tonight. Oh, uh, and I apologize. Our chair, you all know Justin, he wouldn't miss something like this. He is on a plane. Um, he's been dealing, as some of you know, with a, a very serious family health matter for months. And I talked to him before he got on the plane. I'll have some comments from him before we start the work session. But that is why he is not here with us tonight. So the first speaker I have is Laura McNamara followed by Annie Rhodes Klein.
Well, I didn't know I'd be first, so. Um, my name is Laura McNamara. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Mount Daniel. Um, unfortunately, uh, my public speaking hasn't improved since I spoke to you at last week's board meeting, and my expertise is still addressing five-year-olds rather than grown-ups, so please bear with me again. I want to start, as I did last week, by thanking you all for your tireless work on this very difficult budget situation. Thank you for the many responses I received to my emails, and I wanted to thank Mr. Castillo for taking the time to speak with me over the phone. I'm here once again to ask you to reinstate the assistant principal, PYP coordinator, and the teacher para positions at Mount Daniel. I would like to ask you, just as I did last week, to lower the recalibrated teacher salary scale by more than what you've already proposed in order to save those positions. I'm asking you to lower teacher salary because it's pragmat a pragmatic means to an end, but also because I can only hope that hearing a teacher ask for her salary to be lowered will speak to the importance that my colleagues and I place on the positions that we're trying to save. When I spoke to Mr. Castillo last week, he shared with me the concerns and recommendations for the budget that he'd received from some community members, but alluded to the fact that he hadn't heard many concerns or recommendations that corroborated my own. When I look around here tonight, I can only assume that your understanding of the public's opinion will be altered in some way, and I can only hope that this will be reflected in the budget decisions that you make. The precarious situation that will be created by eliminating, eliminating an AP position in the same year that Kathy Haleko is retiring, I think goes without saying. Further, I know the argument has been made that the state does not require an AP position for the number of students in our school, but I beg you to consider. Since when do Falls Church City Schools simply meet a requirement? For as long as I've been here, our expect expectations have always exceeded those that are required by the state. That is what makes our schools special. That is the Falls Church City way. And I can only hope that those things that set us apart, that make us unique and exceptional, are the things that will take priority in the budget. I urge you to heed the comments and what I'm assuming is a demonstration of support by the parents, teachers, and staff who are here this evening. I urge you to reinstate the assistant principal position, the PYP coordinator, and the teacher para positions at Mount Daniel. I believe with all of my heart that my colleagues give everything they have in order to exceed expectations every day in their classrooms. I'm asking you to please help us create and maintain an educational environment for our youngest students that not only meets requirements, but that also exceeds them and therefore supports the exceptionalism of Falls Church City Public Schools. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Ms. Rhodes Klein, followed by Amy Trombo. My name is Annie Rhodes Klein, and I live at 1005 Seton Lane. We have a fourth grader and a sixth grader, both of whom have attended the Falls Church City Public Schools since kindergarten. Our teachers are our schools. In Falls Church City, our teachers, Paraprofessionals and support staff are consistently talented, professional, smart, hardworking, and dedicated. For the best use of my three minutes, I will refer to all of them collectively as teachers. When they think about their school experiences, my children do not pay much attention to whether the school buildings they enter and exit are new and shiny or vintage, but they care about their teachers, they know their teachers, and they will remember their teachers forever. This is Teacher Appreciation Week. Our teachers deserve a lot more than a corsage, a cup of coffee, and a thank you note this week. Let's appreciate our teachers by giving them back all the prep time they need to be fully prepared to do a great job educating and caring for our children. Let's appreciate our teachers by giving them back a meaningful and substantive role in developing their curriculums and schedules. Let's appreciate our teachers by compensating them well and by giving them all the resources and support that they need to continue to do amazing work for the children and for our community. Thank you. Ms. Trumbo, followed by Kathleen Kabuchi. My name is Amy Trumbo. I live at 105 South Lee Street. I have been voting in Falls Church City since 1997. My husband's family is now in the fourth generation and has resided here since the 1940s. This is my first time addressing the school board. I'm disturbed. I'm very disappointed and very disturbed. I was asked over the weekend what the Falls Church way is, what it looks like, and I'm still trying to fully articulate it. 
But there are three things about the Falls Church Way I will say tonight. First, we are a community of professionals and parents trust and support our teachers and our school principals because they are professional educators. It is absolutely appalling to me to learn that probably four of our best and brightest elementary school teachers are being drummed out by administrative harassment. And we are losing three out of four of our school principals so far this year. We have had some bad losses in recent years, but the resignations this week are horrible. And I've been told there are more to come. Drumming out our teachers and principals is not the Falls Church way. Parents trust, support, and empower our professional teachers and our school principals from the bottom up. Second, we are a community that asks and answers questions. To me, the hallmark of a fine education and perhaps a fine democracy is the ability to ask questions, have them answered, and to have a lively and spirited debate. Falls Church has a high density of attorneys and our community has gotten pretty good at this. Debate can be challenging, but we are professionals and grown-ups, and debate is a key part of the process of finding the best path for the whole community. I am absolutely shocked at the email responses I have read from our central office staff to one of our parent community members who was just asking questions. Asking and answering questions and debate as part of the decision-making process is the Falls Church way. Third, there is no room for fear in our community. The tone of our budget conversation has become do this or else and we've seen several acts of retaliation negatively impact our students. Teachers I have directly spoken with are terrified to question anything they are told to do. There are several parents in our community who have been threatened by administrative personnel. This is outrageous. The places in the world with the greatest fear are the places no one wants to live or work. There is no room or tolerance for fear in our community. Fear is not a part of the Falls Church way. I will say again, I am disturbed. Mr. Webb, Mr. Akuma, Ms. Gill, Ms. Rittinger, I voted for you. And after May 5th, I hope you will address the concerns I have for our schools and resuming the Falls Church way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Trombo. Ms. Kabuchi, followed by Delise Vargas. Hello, my name is Kathleen Kabuchi. I am a new face to a school board or city council meeting, although my husband Chris and I have lived in the city for 14 years and are raising our three children, a current fourth grader, a rising kindergartner, and a two-year-old daughter. This should cause you to wonder why. Why tonight? I am here to tell you that even the quiet ones are asking questions and taking notice. We see problems facing our principals, teachers, paraprofessionals, support staff, and our students, and the erodement of the aforementioned Falls Church Way. We have been quietly watching, observing, and asking questions. And we are here to stand with our teachers. And so are hundreds of other citizens and parents. All of us here are here to support our schools, whether you have a paid, hired, volunteer, or board elected role. And I thank all of you who are working to the goal of a holistically healthy school system. One does not rip the heart out of the living organism you are trying to support. The last cuts that are made are to the classrooms and teachers. I am speaking in particular to proposal of class size increase in the elementary years and the elimination of the Mount Daniel vice principal. The spring budget season is an annual event in our town of finger pointing, blaming, and number crunching, and of particular stress to those involved with the schools. But the reasons of this are multifactorial. A lack of trust, lack of transparency, tight budgets, fund balance numbers, comparisons to other jurisdictions, just to name a few. Scare tactics and bullying to make your point now after the final decision is futile and detrimental to a school culture already in steady decline. Please do not insult me by asking me to partake by clicking and moving your already proposed budget cuts around on a screen. I want more choices. Ask the teachers where the amount of roughly 900,000 out of 47-ish million dollars should come from. Maybe start by adding the step salary increases in central office to the chopping block budget simulator. How about reducing the overly abundant use of technology and therefore some annual costs associated with it? Trust me, the support behind reducing iPad usage in elementary school and eliminating personal computers in middle school might just surprise you. What about the continual use of standardized testing I see in elementary schools? My son just told me today he took another one. These are examples of hidden costs that are not shown on the line item budget made available to the public. 
I wonder what our teachers would say. I challenge you to have each grade level's teachers and support staff compose and submit their cuts. We of Falls Church citizens are known for our intelligence, the value we place on education, our sense of community, and understanding the power of our voices united. I look forward to seeing the new proposed budget amendments that protect our teachers' ability to teach this coming school year. Thank you for your time. Again, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but if we could keep the clapping down, it would be very helpful. Ms. Vargas, followed by Liz Hume. Good evening. My name is Delisa Vargas. I'm at 225 Katy Court. Um, I come today as a parent, and I've been a vocal parent in my school. I've been a vocal parent via email. I'm a single parent in this community, so meetings and um, project working groups are very difficult because the weekends are sacred time for me. Um, however, the importance of tonight it was not lost upon me, and that is why I stand in solidarity, not only with the parents of this community, but in particular the teachers of this community. I spent a lot of today trying to figure out how I would address this body. Would I talk about educational standards across this country and public schools that are challenged across this country? Would I talk about my experiences as a, as a parent with stellar teachers like Shane Spindle, who is here tonight, on through to Laura Dixon and, and Miriam Schmoller, and now um, Rob Carey. I'm blessed to have a child who gets to go to school and learn from these educators and experience other educators across her day. It is no great mystery, the power of teachers and the influence they have on our children's lives. I to this day keep in touch with my fourth grade teacher and I'm the parent of a fourth grader at the age of 43. I chose and I had the privilege of choosing to live in this community, irregardless of the fact that I cannot afford to purchase a home in this community while I make a perfectly good living. I have worked in the nonprofit sector my entire career, so I am not unfamiliar with the necessary evil of budget cuts and sacred cows. It is a daily part of my operation as a chief fundraiser for a national nonprofit. I am disturbed not by the need to make budget cuts to a budget. I am not disturbed by the challenge of this community to grapple with where and how and when. I am not afraid of the debates about technology use or all of the valid conversations that come from a small educated community. What I am challenged with today and why I am here is that the vitriol level that I have experienced over the last four years, every budget season, as baseball starts, the vitriol kicks in in this community in a way that's not only disturbing, but detrimental. It's detrimental to this word community. It, is, it doesn't only impact the adults. It impacts what's happening inside our school walls. People are human. Our teachers are human. This is their livelihood. They come to work every day like I go to work every day, and we have our ups and we have our downs. They should not be held to a standard that's unrealistic, and they should be valued every day. In order to be valued, there has to be a level of transparency and input. Putting together something like a 360 that allows for teachers to speak freely and, and not fear retaliation. It's important. All right, thank you. Liz Hume, followed by Monica, Monica Fraze. Hopefully I got that right. Hi, I'm Liz Hume. I'm at 1003 Parker Street. Um, I've heard a lot about the Falls Church Way, and I haven't seen it lately, and it is disturbing. Um, don't play politics with our teachers. We support the teachers. We don't like scare tactics that include threats to cut, our teach cut the teachers and their pay. That is unacceptable. My children are in seventh grade. Seventh grade, what happens in seventh grade? Do you usually like your teachers? My kids love their teachers. They come home every day and tell me wonderful stories and things that their teacher said. That's the reason why we stay here. Um, leadership. Leadership requires real dialogue with teachers and parents. People are scared. They're scared that if they speak out, they're targeted. That is not the Falls Church way. That's not where I want to live. 
We need transparency of spending in budget discussions. There has been serious mismanagement and it needs to end. This is not the false church way. Thank you, Ms. Hume. Ms. Fraze, followed by, I believe, Aaron Taliaferro. Good evening, everyone. My name is Monica Fries, and I live at 415 Poplar Drive. I truly understand that the board is faced with difficult budget choices, but I'm here tonight to ask that in making your decisions, you please focus on items that, wherever possible, do not impact class size. Cuts that impact class size should be the cuts of last resort. I also want to take this opportunity to address what I view as a larger and more serious issue about which I'm sure there will be more dialogue with the full board and the administration soon, and that is the state of the school morale and lack of supportive leadership. It is disturbing that two, and now we're learning, three of our four principals are leaving the system, and that my, at my son's school, Thomas Jefferson, 12 or more teachers are leaving this year alone. This is frankly alarming and is indicative of a much larger problem that needs to be addressed and addressed in the short term. This is the very first time I have ever attended a meeting like this, and I know that's true of many folks in this room, and I know there are many parents out there in the community who are not even here today that are ready to galvanize and work towards solutions. Our teachers are what built this school system, and we need to put them first. And I want to be clear, this issue of teacher morale, it's not all about salaries and money. It's about real inclusion in decisions before they are made. It's about respect, fair treatment, and trust. Things need to change, and I and others stand ready to do whatever it takes to have full line item transparency in budgets, accountability of leadership, and the return of a school system that values diversity of opinions and true dialogue about what the future of our schools should look like. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fries. I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Um, Aaron Taliaferro, followed by Kathy Haleko. Good evening, my name is Aaron Tolliver. Um, I'm a father of four, 10th grade, 8th grade, 4th grade, 2nd grade, um, resident in the city. My wife's been an educator for 22 years. She's a teacher in the city, though in the interest of full disclosure, she has resigned her position. So unless someone convinces her to resent that resignment, she will not be a teacher here next year. Um, military veteran, 22 years in the Air Force. When I came home from Afghanistan in 2010, 2011 started a period that repeats every year. Every year, as one woman has already said, the budget deliberations start. The school board gets a pass through from the superintendent who passes it straight through the city council without any apparent deliberation in my mind. It goes to the city council and the city council makes a decrease to the proposed increase. Then communications come out talking about how, oh, it's a cut. And then there's this vitriolic discussion that goes on in the community. You're either for tax increases or you're against teachers. You're for tax increases or you're against new school buildings. It creates a sense of division. It creates a sense of anger. It creates a sense of acrimony. And it's really all nonsense. Now, in my real life today, my job is to advise foreign governments on how to set up public financial management practices. I specialize in teaching people how to do performance and results-based budgeting. To the members of the school board who are charged with trying to figure out where these cuts are made, I feel for you. Because two, three years ago, I started to try to understand this problem. The way you put the budget together is a joke, an absolute joke. There is no way you can look at that budget and tie expenditures to performance or results or outcomes. It's not even a good facsimile of a line item budget. It's awful. So to the school board, you have to make choices about trade-offs of where to make cuts. I'm here to tell you, you can't because it is a opaque budget at best. That has to change. Having said that, one thing I know for sure is that somehow or another, we've been able to afford hundreds of new computers, tons of new initiatives. There's the shiny Apple banner on the high school. And yet we're always talking about, well, it's got, got to increase class size or we got to cut teacher pay. But yet all these new things get paid for. Do you know how much difference that makes in the actual performance in a classroom? Let me tell you. 
slim to none. Our classrooms are good, one, because of the community we live in and the parents who are involved every day, and two, the teachers that are there. Ones you're losing at an alarming rate. Laura Dixon lives right out my backyard. I've heard plenty from her, and I keep hearing from others, my wife included. So to the school board, I'd ask, you have a mess before you. Do your best. I feel for you. I don't know how you're going to do it. But once this is over, change the leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tolliver. Ms. Haleko, followed by Shay Wakely. Good evening. I'm Kathy Haleko, principal of Mount Daniel. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you this evening about the budget shortfall that threatens Mount Daniel and the very impactful choices that will need to be made. Many of the $912,000 cuts to the FY17 budget were requests that had been included in the budget the school board sent forward to the city council. But much to my surprise, included in this list was the Mount Daniel assistant principal, a position that has been serving the school for six years. This decision was made without the courtesy of a discussion prior to the announcement, nor were pros and cons entertained. One school board member reported that parents asked him, what does the Mount Daniel AP do and why do we need one? As the number one advocate for Mount Daniel, I feel compelled to answer that question. Just to be clear, the AP at Mount Daniel is a .5, not full time. Ask any principal in the division if they would like to give up their APs, even a .5, and you would hear a resounding no. They would clearly tell you how important this role is in their buildings as it is in ours. As the one person in this room who has worked both with and without an assistant principal, I'm especially concerned about the impact this cut to the budget will have on our program. I will share the ways I think the AP makes an enormous difference. I always tell the students that the most important thing the principal does at school is to make sure our students are safe. Some students have written over the years, thank you for being our principal, you keep us safe. I am happy to say that we have improved over the years with safety and security, with the presence of a security guard, security cameras, locks on our doors inside and out, badges and practice drills of all kinds that prepare the students and the staff for emergencies. If I'm called away from the building, it is difficult if not impossible to ask teachers to step away from their students and step in to manage an emergency. It is impossible in an emergency to give hundreds of five and six year olds direction without a great deal of adult support and supervision. The AP is the principal's backup and support in every drill, every emergency, every decision. The principal is the instructional leader in the building. I take this role very seriously and have worked hard to listen to the needs of the teachers and plan professional development that provides teachers with the tools they need to teach their students. Excellent professional development in the hands of excellent teachers is a recipe for success. The AP does the same. In this case, the AP is also the .5 primary years program coordinator, which is all about collaborative curriculum development. The AP has had a leadership role in the successful evaluation of the PYP program this year and its continuation as well. Removing the .5 AP coordinator sends the wrong message to staff. Oh dear. It says, you can make do without leadership. The principal will not be able to easily support this important role. The AP is one of the leaders on the response to intervention team. The AP has been given responsibility for the school board's initiative for the STEAM program at Mount Daniel. And every one of these very collaborative efforts thrives on teacher's participation and is what has made Mount Daniel the success it is in teaching and learning. All right, Kathy, in fairness to everyone else, we need to hold you to three as well. I'm sorry. I, I, I have these remarks in paper form. I've given one to each board member. Which we have. I, my biggest concern is that Aaron, Kelly, and I both sent some suggestions to the board that these cuts need to be more evenly distributed among all of the buildings, and we see that as something that could be done through salary. So please take a moment to read the other things that I have mentioned because they're all important. Okay, thank you.
All right. The next speaker is Shay Wakely, followed by Diana Vizzetti. Okay, that's hard to follow, but um, good evening. My name is Shay Wakely. I've been a kindergarten paraprofessional for the past 12 years. I'm speaking on behalf of my fellow kindergarten paraprofessionals at Mount Daniel. As you deliberate next year's budget, I ask you to con reconsider eliminating the two days that will be cut from the paraprofessional contract year. For the paras who currently work seven and a half hour days, this is an insult to the already devastating blow when the contract day was shortened by half an hour. This adds two days to the already 13 days that were effectively cut by this move. When the school year was extended to 182 days, we lost yet another work day because our contract year remained at 191 days. Each day that is eliminated takes away valuable time to collaborate with our teaching partners and to prepare materials. I'm fortunate to work with a group of paras who are so dedicated to their students and teaching partners that they will stay as long as it takes to get the work done. This is why you will rarely see the parking lot at Mount Daniel empty at day's end. Please value this dedication and loyalty by removing the option of losing two more days and reinstating the eight hour day. We are some of the lowest paid employees in the school system, so it, it will only take in total $10,000 to restore the eight hour day to every kindergarten para. Thank you. Thank you. Diana Vizzetti followed by Amanda Blanchard. Good afternoon, my name is Diana Vizzetti at 102 West Greenway Boulevard. Um, I, like most parents here, moved here because of the schools and this budget situation has been, as a citizen of Falls Church, outright embarrassing. Um, how could budgets be proposed without showing a line by line item of expenditures? Well, they are. Normally, they are. Two years ago, this is the second fiscal year in a row that they were completely dropped off from the budget proposals, and I don't understand how the school board didn't catch this. Prior to that, it was two actuals for that school year. Before Ms. Uh, Dr. Tony Jones arrived, the budgets were transparent. There were very exact numbers in the expenditures against the proposed budgets and the existing current operating budget. There is no room for anything other than that. We, we need 100% transparency. So these cuts are, are fictitious unless we know exactly what is being spent from our school district. And just by looking around, oh my god, who feels there needs to be a leadership change? They voted for you. They voted for you. It's time to represent the children and parents and citizens and teachers of this city. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Blanchard. Good evening. Uh, it's obvious that people are passionate about the things that are close to them, their schools, their teachers, their students. Um, as the president of the Falls Church City Education Association, I have to think of the big picture. Everybody, all of our staff, all of our members. And it's difficult to listen to the things that other people value. All right, <laughs> take a moment. But I think the one thing that we haven't heard from that I've heard from a number of different people is things like cuts to our support staff. We can't do that. They are our lowest paid. They are people who have not gotten raises in years. So when there's suggestions to cut even bonuses for those who are at the top of their scale, you're talking about our lowest paid employees who haven't gotten raises in years. We can't do that to them. Thank you. Thank you. And we have one more, Mr. Dan Rice. Um, 
I just wanted to read a couple of email exchanges. Um, from uh, John Lawrence to Justin Castillo regarding the sense at the city council at the work session is to cut school board ask by 912,000. No tax increase, in other words, another gutless council. Justin responds, yep. Dan Seasy, angry and poorly informed, said we were voting ourselves another school board pay increase this year. John resp replies, wow, lying or just as uninformed as usual? Also, I've not seen another answer about, I've not seen an answer from Tom about whether the increase we did last year was actually legal. Um, there's a couple others, but then uh, Aaron says, I thought we had an as needed budget session this Saturday from nine to 12. Maybe we don't need it. That would be an excellent surprise. John Lawrence responds, got it. Yeah, it kind of depends on how badly we want to scare people. Right now, we should be pushing to get out the torches and pitchforks to the council. Um, I would suggest that maybe the torches and pitchforks ought to go to the leadership of this school board because that kind of relationship and those, that kind of feelings towards the council who is doing your job because you guys failed to provide the oversight of the school district and the, school, the budget because you, you don't, you're not... I've, we, there are many other emails that show the relationship between the leadership of the school board and our superintendent is not a supervisory role. It's, 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 uh, there, there, there's no, it's more of, it's more, it's camaraderie. It's, it's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship rather than a supervisor over an employee, which is what you guys are. You guys are the employers. You have one employee that you're supposed to oversee, and you guys are failing to do that. The last 10 years, our school have, schools have consistently dropped in the rankings nationally, and even now, McLean High School, uh, for the last two, maybe three years, I'm not, not sure, has ranked higher than, than Falls Church uh, City, uh, George Mason has. And I, I know one family who's actually moved to McLean for the schools and lower taxes. So if we're not going to be the best school, why are we paying the higher taxes? I think this, the council was very much justified in the cuts. And there's absolutely pl places we can cut the budget without cutting teacher pay or even in enlarging classroom size. But unless we have an open, transparent budget, we can't, we can't find that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Who would like to speak? All right, seeing no one, we'll close the public comment section and move on to our work session. We're just gonna sit down here, give us a minute to move the microphones.
right. Yeah. Okay, everyone, we're going to start our work session now. We've got, we've got microphones on so that, unlike a normal work session, hopefully you'll be able to hear us easily. And this is also being uh, broadcast live and will be recorded for anything you can't stay for, since we have no idea how long we're going to be here tonight. So actually what we'll do is we'll start. Well, let me, let me channel my inner Justin, because before he got on the plane, he, he called and just wanted me to say a, a few things for everybody, and I know I, I share his remarks. He just wanted to remind us that this is our budget, not the superintendent's. The superintendent brings us suggestions, brings us ideas, but the bottom line is we passed the budget request that went to the council. That budget request has been cut, and now we need to find a new budget that is ours and ours alone which isn't something that's news to anybody, but Justin just wanted me to, uh, to stress that. All options are on the table. Last week, we agreed that we were not gonna take the staff increase down more than 20%, so that's the one big thing that is not on the table, but you know, I frequently had people call me, um, both you know, board members and others, and say, is everything on the table? At this point, when you're looking for almost a million dollars in cuts, I think everything does have to be on the table. Now, there may be very good reasons for not choosing to cut things, but we need to start from the assumption that everything is fair game, and our bottom line goal is the kids. And anything we can do to protect the teachers, as we've heard, anything we can do to protect class size, as we've heard and we all know, we need to do but the bottom line is we need to cut almost a million dollars. Now, as we talked about tonight, we're not gonna do all of it tonight. Hopefully we're gonna get along and get some sort of consensus on the way we're going, but we will not be taking votes in, in any sense of the word tonight. So I don't know if anybody has a, a question on process. Is this, okay, Michael? Well, what we'll do is we'll start, we've got work packet number nine, and, and we'll treat this like a regular budget work session where we'll go through with Tony's ideas, and then I know we've all got ideas. I have certainly enough things marked up. And in terms of, you know, some people saying the line item budget isn't there and it's not transparent enough, there were several people who reached out in the last few days and said that, and I, I sent them all to this document that I'm sure, Phil, is the one you've gone through where we've got budget categories by school, by category, by two, four, six, eight, uh, 12 digit budget numbers that goes on for 50 pages. So I think there's more there than I think some people have given us credit for. Phil? Just a quick note. Uh, and I have, I've also gotten requests from people for the line item budget and provided it where it's available. It, one of the issues that has come up uh, is, as was mentioned in one of the public comments and I, I recently asked, it would be very helpful if the line item budget with the actuals from last year and the year to date from this year could be shown because it could show execution in each of the different line items and maybe point to areas where historically we've been underspending. Um, and so I see that there's a sheet. I haven't had a chance, of course, to look at this before because it's the first time I've seen it, but in this budget on actuals. But what, I'd, what would be really helpful is, and I would think the school system would have this, the actuals by line item. So that would be you know, the same line item, but just with an additional spreadsheet print on F, uh, FY15 actuals and FY16 year-to-date actuals. Um, just to see, you know, again, it's more informative to look at it, I think, that way than it is in terms of higher level categories. Well, actually, that, that begs a question. In, in the document I'm looking for, and honestly, Tony, I don't even know what it's called, but we have 2016 amended. Is that different than 2016 actual? That is, that is the, uh, the, the total budget um, amount. It does not show, as Mr. Reitinger was, was saying, for example, I gave the school board a uh, budget status report as of the end of 
March, which was um, the end of the third quarter, which was 75% of the way through the year. So I think what Mr. Reitinger is asking for is not only what was budgeted for this year, but then what has been spent year to date yes. and, and how, how that's tracking okay. along. And what the full year actuals were for last year, where yeah. we've got a full year to look at. Sure. Um, and so, I mean, and that, help, that requires seeing what, the, what last year's budget was as well. But, yeah. if, if it's possible to print something out that way, um, I know I would, it would help me and I think it would help members of the community that want to drill into the detail. Certainly. And I think that there's, there's a, an ex example later on in the packet of, of just, just that, so. Right, but it's, it's, it's one sheet, right? It's not a, it's not. Correct, but, but it, it, it just as an exemplar. Okay. Thank you, Hunter. Yeah, thanks. So, so meaning this document. Uh, actually, it's. Could be, well, it, yeah. I think what yeah. you're saying, okay. Bill, is you would like this document. Yes. To have that. Okay. Additional so. columns on the long, multi-page line item budget that show those two categories we talked about. Right, got it. right now we've got 2016 amended, 2017 proposed, 100% yeah. change, school by school, line item by line item. We would like 2015 actual. I think what, what would be, I mean, if it's fittable on a, on a spreadsheet, because you don't need anything, any of the other right columns, but you'd want 2015 budget, 2015 full year actuals, 2016 amended, 2016 year to date, and 2017 proposed. So those five columns by line item would be enable you to see how we executed last year under each line item, what the year to date execution is under each line item, and then what the proposal is for next year. And you know, then your, your attention can be drawn to, well, if we've underspent the last two years, you know, why are we asking for a raise this year? And, and it, it enables you to spot areas. I'm sure you guys have looked at it, but it would be helpful, I think, for the board Certainly. and the community to see that. Yeah, I think that would make an already very useful document even more. Um, oh, and just to remind everyone, I know we need the microphone both for everybody here, but also for the recording. Even. Okay. Hunter, why do we have amended? What is amended? If we've got the budget and we've got the actual, what is the amended? The amended reflects, uh, as you know, about 85% of the uh, school board's budget is salaries and benefits, and it is, it is first put together uh, by the superintendent in the November-December time frame of the, of the uh, previous year, and then go, goes to the school board and goes through the council, um, and is approved, it normally is approved at, at the end of April. Uh, what happens after that is that uh, there, are, there are resignations, there are new hires, people change jobs, people change benefits. And so it is actually, to Mr. Reitinger's point, it is actually um, m more helpful and meaningful than to, to basically, to after following the transfer of the salaries and benefits and those sorts of things, once we know who the hires are and where they're being placed and what benefits they're taking, um, at that point, um, you, you, the budget that was passed by the board in the end of April um, ha has those transfers in it and thus has been, been amended. Yeah. Thank you. And unless anybody objects, when we move to Tony, have her explain what she's got for us and then we can launch into our questions. Okay, um, the first chart that we have in here tonight is one that you've seen many times, but we know that we have a lot of people coming to our budget meetings that may not have been to some before. Um, so it's just as a reminder, the way that our revenue comes in and that our spending is going out. And if you look on that bottom section, and again, for, I know for the school board, this is kind of a reminder for us. Um, you have purchase services, books, materials, and supplies, and capital additions and replacements. And people will often say, what is that 15%? Because 85% of our budget is people. It's either pay, uh, benefits, it's this little section right here. And what we're trying to um, show you again tonight is when we, if we don't want to um, eliminate a position or we don't want to do anything that has to do with pay, it must come <clears throat> from these three areas, which are our 15%. Um, and just as a reminder, and I think that um, somebody said it earlier, but what we're dealing with right now is this gap down on the bottom of the $912,600. Now, it's not, this is, we're not trying to go into our existing FY16 budget and reduce teachers or reduce pay. What we are trying to do is after the school board put together your budget that you felt 
uh, we needed to maintain the school system and to meet the needs of the system based on our future growth, um, that's where this 912 is coming from. So when we talk about cutting a teacher, we are not cutting a, a position. It really is, we're not getting the three positions that the school board has felt like we need for growth if we decide to go in that area. So I just want to clarify that, but it is that down on the bottom, it's that $912,000 difference um, is what we're working on. So behind that, on page um, three, what Hunter has done for us um, is trying to go in again. You, you've looked at purchase services. We've sent you information on that um, back in work session two, which was, I know, quite a while ago. You looked at all these items on purchase services. We've tried to give you um, the entire seven million so that you can have an opportunity to go through and look and say, you know, what is it that we could cut? What is it that we couldn't cut? And one of the things that people ask Hunter and I a lot is what is discretionary, what is not? And that's a hard question in that electrical service is, is not discretionary. We have to pay our electric. Um, we have to pay natural gas. But when you talk about school security and security guards, that is discretionary. Is it really discretionary? Is that something the school board would entertain? I don't, I don't think so, but again, um, there are items on here, and one thing that came up, you know, recently, and I think uh, Justin asked me about it yesterday, is the central office rent. Certainly that's discretionary, but we would have to have somewhere else uh, to relocate um, people's offices. Um, and that was an agreement, if I remember correctly, Mr. Kimball, between city council kind of school board at the time that we moved to those offices. So um, when you go through here, what we've tried to do is target those areas um, where we knew that it wouldn't be... Um, on the non-discretionary items where it wouldn't be devastating. We have taken from staff development, and you can see some of that in the red over on the right-hand side, the instructional staff development services, system-wide staff development, um, some of the memberships and dues, but this is the smaller number. We do have two other numbers where if the school board wanted to take all of the memberships and dues, but again, I put that sheet in this packet again for you that you saw last week because if you eliminate memberships and dues, it is still taking things away from teachers and students because you're talking about dues for, for competitions for students and, and those sorts of things that are in that, that item. Um, on page four, I mean, again, these are kind of just continuation, but it's, I feel like Hunter did a great job trying to break it down in a very simplistic way as much as we can. If you look at the top, for instance, you have things like your postal service, power school, and we have already tried to cut back on our postal, I think, as much as we can, not mailing things out at the beginning of the year like we used to, trying to do more things electronic. Um, that second light item, you know, the power school, that's our whole attendance and gradebook system. So there are a lot of things in here that, um, that we can't cut out. And some of the things that we could talk about, I mean, if the school board is wanting to entertain other items, um, but most of them, I think, are they're, they're difficult to touch. We have programs like our ESOL dual enrollment program that's not required, but it is great for our students. And so I, I don't consider it discretionary, but the school board may feel differently. Um, when you look at things like um, contracted preschool music, that's one that you already took out. Um, and then the student competitions is still in there on the bottom. On page five, you're looking at all the books, materials, and supplies. And this is an area, again, that our principals have all said they don't feel like they have enough money because materials and supplies have been flat in our budget for virtually a decade. I think Kathy actually said for sure eight years at Mount Daniel. Um, when we go in and we start looking at those, those items, it's not easy just to say let's cut materials and supplies 30% or 40%. Um, it's going to have an impact on um, items for the schools. Same way with office supplies. Um, Another one that people sent um, to us was like the lease of equipment. Those are all of our photocopiers. And while it looks like a big number, it is, but it's every photocopier in the school division. Um, and also just remind you, as you, if you have questions as she goes along, yeah. don't wait if you want to ask. Yeah. Um, I have two. Uh, oh, tell me the page numbers too, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have two quick questions. Uh, you mentioned about the fees where for memberships mm -hmm. uh, and that it would cut fees for competition for students and 
what areas are you yep. you're referring to first? If you look on page eight um, and page nine, those are the two pages that you saw at the last session where I tried to go through and highlight just so we would understand. If you want to go in and cut all of the dues and registration, what does that mean? There are certain things like VHSL, VSBA, we need to be a member of. Um, the things that are in pink that, and again, this is not fancy, fancy highlighting, it was just trying to make it easier for you to spot what we're talking about. Things that are in pink, you're talking about the Technology Student Association, Math Counts, Word Masters, these are all dues and registrations for our students. They're not d membership fee, big fees. Um, when you look on page nine, um, and, and you'll see it on page eight as well, a lot of what's in purple, that what you see in purple are all teacher organizations. These are where our counselors, our members of their uh, counseling organization, tends to be specialty areas. Our foreign language teachers are member of their organizations. That's how they connect because they don't have, you know, a lot of people to connect with in a small school division. It helps them connect nationally. They get a lot of their information there. But just to go and cut dues and memberships um, really has an impact on teachers and students. I just wanted to be sure that, that we knew um, that that's what that line item is. And so we did give you that minimal number in the budget, which was going through all of those dues and memberships and say, what can we cut out? Uh, there's kind of a middle level. There's a beginning level where you maintain uh, teacher and student memberships. Then there's the next level. You would leave the student competitions and then the third level. And it still doesn't get you to a great spot because um, the bigger items tend to be like VSBA and those sorts of things. Does that answer that? I guess I have one more question about that, Dr. Jones, which is your, your figure for this year is 64,406 on the second page, page six, page nine. The budgeted figure for next year is 70,120. Is that just inflationary or was a projection done? Do you know, Mr. Kimball, if that's inflation? This is this year, so it could be with FY17, because our dues generally do go up a little bit each year, um, like VSBA, VAS, yeah. yeah. Do you have another one for me too? Okay. Um, sorry. Uh huh. So, on these first pages, three, four, five, etc. Mm -hmm. These are all the top line division wide figures for things that are in this. Yes. So we're trying to make it easier for people to know what they're. What's right. So yes. office supplies here, the fifty five two is the combination of all the office supplies under 6213005600100 office supplies under central office under every school it's all of that right okay um, the short answer is yes the long the longer answer is that there are certain um, cost centers actually um, mine finance for example being one Ms. Highs in, in HR, um, we only have one materials and supply object code there with the 6,000, which is office supplies. Yes. And there are um, budgeted under those um, some software. So, so it looks extraordinarily high when, in fact, our HR software is budgeted in, in, the, um, in the personnel office supply account. The, uh, the time and attendance software that, that we use that we're implementing um, is budgeted in the finance uh, line item. I have attempted to break those out on, on the list before the, before the board and to, to include under office supplies really only those things that you could consider office supplies, you know, paper and, and um, you know, those notebooks, those sorts of things. Uh, the, the other question that I had was talking about the the photocopier lease that's on page three. Uh, I don't know if you roughly know how many copiers are there throughout the the system. I think approximately 14 or 15. Okay. Um, and I guess what I'm, I'm looking at, because we're at that point where that we have to kind of get down into that level of, of we, that 
can we reduce the number of copiers within each of the buildings to make sure to, I think we're at that point of where <laughs> we're looking for, for dollars to, to reduce those numbers of copiers in buildings. I don't know how many are per building, but if you have to walk a little further to a place to go make a copy, I don't, I, I think that's in this case, that's something that we may have to, to do of reducing it to, to maybe, to maybe to a building or something like that so you're not going all over. I, we're, we're, we're at that point that we're talking of what, that we, what we don't want to cut, but everybody has to take a level of inconvenience at this point. Yeah, I that. Just, um, you know, speaking as a teacher, I can tell you um, we need our copiers and there's always a line and even where I teach, every department has at least one copier and printer and there's always a line and you're you know you're copying documents to use in your classroom and sometimes you're doing something at the last minute be, things come up and and you um you really i mean it, we're talking about you know treating our teachers right don't take away the copiers just don't we can't do that <laughs> and and given the amount that we'd actually save and the headaches it would cause it, it really isn't worth it One, one more and then let's keep going. I would say I, I, I appreciate that, Ms. Ward, but in my, I, I don't know how, I mean, when I was going through and just like doing my own cuts, I had to salami slice stuff all over the place. And I had to salami slice some of the photocopier leases out. You know, we've, you know, a lot of people out there have questions about technology. I've got my own questions, but if we're gonna use it in our school systems, we gotta take some of the advantages of it. And everybody's trying to use less paper. And I understand it's inconvenient, but you know if it's if it's setting off you know a 20% reduction in copiers versus a paraprofessional day, I know where I'm going to draw the line, and it's reducing copier usage. Um, and so, I, is it, we're, we're we're down to a bunch of bad choices. Um, and you know, I don't I don't like if there's anything I don't want to do, it's make life less convenient for teachers because they're the backbone of our schools. We all believe that. Um, but you know, if we're going to have smart boards in classrooms, then maybe we're going to have to get you know new ways to instead of making copiers at the last minute to using smart boards. Um, so I, I just I think that all of that sort of stuff has to be on the table as we're going through to try and you know and maybe it gets down to like well do we you know cut teacher salary ten thousand dollars more or do we cut ten thousand dollars in copiers at the end of the day, and that's the trade off we're going to have to make. What's the least disruptive of our school system? So. I just, I, it's not a, I, I can't say that that's sacrosanct from my perspective. And I would agree with that, that we are, we are at that point now to have to kind of look at that, those type of level of cuts. And I'm sorry, I think we got through page four, but just kind of pointing out uh, the different headings that were there for purchase services. And again, I know the school board has seen a lot of this, but so much of it, like your telephones and things, um, cannot, you know, can't be reduced. Um, and then on page five, you're looking at the books, materials, and supplies. We did go in, and this is where it's really not a. Re I'm not going to say it's a reduction because we're just holding schools flat again. And, it, you know, we were trying in the school board budget, you wanted to put in a little bit extra, and it wasn't a lot, but I think it would have been helpful. But we've pulled that back out again, and that was the 27.5. Um, the other item we have are textbooks, and we've pulled 25,000 off of Now, that's a line item, certainly, um, that is discretionary. The, the thing about that item, we could take that down more. Lisa and I have talked a lot about that, but we are supposed to be in our math adoption, uh, K-5, uh, going into next year. And as the school board knows, that's been something that we've heard a lot about, that we want new resources. Um, it would be putting that off. Um, we also need them at the high school. Our math books are about nine years old. Um, so we could look at that. The only thing I really caution is that if you take something like textbooks and we move that to something personnel, it's going to make it very incredibly difficult in FY18 to f try to find this other 15% somewhere else again because it's just asking for more of an increase next year to get it back. You have to have some money in there for, for the materials and supplies and textbooks and things. So again, that is a big number because textbooks, that 149,000 could very likely uh, caught, be that expense just for K-5 mathematics uh, easily and could be a little bit more. 
That's why we tend to keep them for a while. Um, we've gone in, sorry. Uh -huh. I see some indication in the audience that our professionals who use, who teach our kids this math program are saying that they don't need that. Just want to throw that, that we're out not there. wanting to go through the math adoption, or I think we, uh, yeah. I, I am going based on nods and saying we don't need it. Um, <laughs> from what I'm seeing up here, um, I know that's probably a bigger discussion, but I want to throw that out there that I think it's important to ask our teachers and our staff what they need and not, I don't know what they need. Um, I'm a school board member, I'm not a teacher. So I think it's important to ask them, do you need this? And is it something that you think we can give up? And if we can give it up and save something else, is it worth it to you? I got you, I got you. So I don't, uh, I, what I don't want to do is try and say, well, we can cut this off and put it off till next year. I don't think we're in that environment anymore. I think we're in an environment where we've got a new normal that's lower. You know, all of us think we need some new school facilities, including a new high school. And those are needs are not going to go away, and they're just going to put more demands on us. So we need to make cuts where we can sustain the lower amount with an uptick. So um, if we're going to cut textbook, it's because we think we're going to cut that long term, not because we're going to put things off a year, at least in my perspective. I mean, sometimes you can put stuff off a year and say, we'll go to a four-year refresh cycle as opposed to a three-year refresh cycle. And that's okay. But you know, it's, it's still a sustained lower expenditure rate. And we've just got to do that, even if it's painful. Um, we also have, uh, of course, the library materials. So that, that was an area where we took down, I think, a couple of weeks ago, um, uniforms and materials. On page six, the last, cap the last section is at capital replacements and additions. Um, that's where that lease for technology comes from, uh, which is the first item. The fourth one down is the vehicle replacements, where we've taken that down. And again, a lot of people don't realize that we not only have to have school buses, but we do have a car fleet. Uh, we have quite a few students that go all over the place from Maryland to um, Virginia um, for special school settings. But what we've done there is reduced that uh, by moving those two buses to a lease purchase instead of just trying to purchase outright. And again, it, you know, it's, it does make FY18, and Mr. Hunter, we were, or we, Mr. Kimball looking at a three-year lease, or was it five? Five. So it means for five years, we are going to be needing to lease the bus. And it also means that next year, and I know that we've talked about this, if we do get you know, another 50 or 100 students from these two new developments, we may very well need a third bus. So I just uh, keep that in mind, especially as we talk about the contingency and the use. Um, but that does give us the replacement bus, and then it will also, for the bus that died um, a month or so ago, and we do need both of those. Um, sorry, mm-hmm, sure. And, and Sorry, Tony and I had a talk about this earlier where I was saying, you know, if things are really truly on the table, could we just not buy the buses? And then what would we do? Would we have staggered arrival times where, you know, you'd have to go out and you pick up some kids and they sit at school while the others, while buses go back out to, you know, pick up others? I mean, if everything is on the table, we need to start thinking like that too, as unpleasant as it is. Yeah, I mean, there are ways to reduce buses. I hope we're not there yet. I've had this discussion um, with Mr. Harris. You can run a sixth grade route. Sixth grade starts at a different time because they tend to not access high school classes like seven and eight. Um, and it gives you a whole nother route, but it also costs you money because you're paying drivers uh, extra time and extra route. So while it saves on buses long term, you have to calculate all of that in. But that's a, that's a big shift for us, um, just even in how our school operates. So I had one question based on the, the fact that the, the bus camera cost was in there. Oh. This, the, I should probably know an answer to the answer to this, but I don't. Um, are the, the fees that are generated from the school bus cameras, are, they, are, the, are the citation dollar amounts set by Virginia state law or city statute? Oh, that might be a Tom Horn question. Well, yeah. Are we charging the maximum? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so on page six, again, you're looking at uh, furniture and equipment replacements. And I know that uh, somebody had asked about furniture. And quite frankly, when we add classes, for, and, and kindergarten's probably the best. Well, kindergarten, actually, I think we'll have furniture in storage somewhere because they went down a level. But when we have to add a class that is an additional, it's just a scramble to find furniture money. We do not have that furniture money built in anywhere simply because this is we deal with this every year as far as trying to stretch the dollars. So that is the total of that seven million uh, that we have. And so, you know, we've tried to go back to the next level, which when you look at on seven, on page seven, just giving you another glance at, this is the office supply area um, and why we've reduced what we've reduced. And, mm -hmm. go sorry, sure. Another question on page sure. Uh, the, I noticed you, you proposed the reduction of security cameras and building equipment from mm -hmm. twelve five to ten to to I guess two five mm -hmm. a reduction of ten thousand. Um, I when I did my own analysis I didn't include that. And I I just I would like to not cut that. And the main reason is events like the issue that we had at TJ mm -hmm. um, a few weeks ago. Um, I just in the, we live in an era and our schools are accessible enough to the community that having adequate camera coverage I think is important and we faced an incident where I mean to the best of my knowledge our you know better cameras might have given us better imagery and been better do a better job of identifying the person that we would like to find um, so I, I understand it if it's necessary if we can't make it without it then we can't do it but it I don't think reducing money for security cameras is a cost-free action I think it reduces the safety of our kids. And mm -hmm. so if that's really what we need, I think we ought to work to save that. And we can circle back around with uh, Seve Padilla on that one too and see if it was just upgrading or if it was new sections. Uh, and I have a question about the, uh, the computer lease and, and, mm -hmm. and purchase payment. Uh, can you go in a little bit more detail of what that 370000 is going to be covering? Yeah, that is actually, this is the third year um, of our lease for our laptops, and one of the reasons we went this way is it did spread it out over three years, so it made it very easy for Hunter and I to budget, um, and it also allowed us to start breaking those computer labs down so that we could gain capital space for classrooms, which we've done at all of our buildings, and it's been a huge help for us, especially at places like MEH and GM. Um, so it's a very, it's a set number and it basically is, it's mainly your high school and a few of your uh, middle school devices and then what we, we did is we took any inventory at middle school and high school and moved all of that down to elementary so that we weren't buying brand new refresh at the elementary level where the usage is, they don't need the long battery life and things of that nature. So that's a set payment. So if I can piggyback on this question, is that the final payment? It is the final payment. What I, what I can tell you is that our digital learning teams um, will be coming to the school board uh, based off what they're asking for. I don't anticipate in FY18 that our teachers are going to want to see this go away because they believe in having a 21st century um, educational environment and this when we buy in bulk it actually gives us much better pricing than when we used to go out and just buy what we could buy when we could buy it. Um, so, but again, that'll be an FY18 discussion and, and our teachers, their digital learning teams are looking at that right now. I, I guess the, the, I'm asking more importantly, will we, we won't need to make another $370,000 payment. You won't unless it's built into FY18 to do a refresh cycle because we're on a three year cycle. Refresh cycle meaning we buy a new set of computers? Yeah, you either take all of the ones that you have at middle school, high school, and we shuffle them all down again to the elementary so that it's no cost at the lower level and you're infusing your high school students who have the greatest usage, especially um, with the newer machines. But again, that'll be an FY18 budget discussion. I, I, I guess I'm, so do these machines, what's the useful life of these machines? Well, if you move them from like a high school environment down to the younger students, it's five and six years. And that's why that model works for us where it's really inexpensive because we're not having to refresh everything for our younger students. We're focused on our high school students who travel with them, need longer battery life, and tend to want newer, um, newer technology. Okay. Um, and I guess for me, this is a, a circle back to a like, question that I had when we began this process. Um, I think we, because of that level of purchase, I think we really need to 
I, I am a proponent of having some technology in the classroom because that is the world that we live in, but uh, I think those digital learning teams really need to take a look at the, the bring your own device piece instead of us potentially making this big purchase and where we would, those students who potentially are coming from families that they may not be able to afford those those purchases that then we would work to to provide those students to make sure that they have that that access the same accessibility as the, the students who can but I think we really need to to look at bring your own device um, as a proponent part of what we do here to keep keep that technology piece going yeah, I will say again, and this is probably not going to help us tonight, so I don't think we want to spend too long on it, but that will be another big discussion going into next year because if you're a high school teacher, there are big challenges when 24 different devices show up in your classroom. You don't really know what's on them. We don't have the same level of control, and our parents have been... Uh, very strong also about how they want the devices controlled and so that'll be a big discussion and again we can run uh, bring your own device right now uh, we are a dual system we can do that our teachers uh, trialed Chromebooks they trialed uh, other tablets and um, one thing about the like for iPad for instance which is more less than expensive is um, they won't run on state testing and neither would Chromebooks that issue in another 12 months they say will be changing and um, certainly I think the digital learning teams even at the high school can can explore other options. Yeah, well, I just, you know, as a, as a parent of young kids too, I also, I think that, and I've asked for a reevaluation of our technology plan. I think it's very important. This is a very big number. I don't know that we need, I would argue we need no technology in our preschool. We could probably shift that out. And my son goes to that preschool. I would also argue that we need less technology in our K-1, and I also have a child there. So I see this firsthand. Um, and I'd like to see us reconsider not using our, the most expensive devices available. I think Apple is, I don't have Apple products in my house because they're very expensive. I have a Chromebook. Um, so, you know, let's look at, let's look at Kindle Fires and let's look at Chromebooks. I understand there's a state testing issue, but it doesn't mean that everybody needs to have an iPad and everybody needs to have a MacBook so that we can do state testing. Um, I think that there are other ways to handle that. And this, as we've all noted, this budget issue is not going to go away. We aren't going to suddenly have tons of revenue, and when I look at a district like ours, I don't think that iPads and MacBooks, I might not have used the right technology, terminology, are what we can afford. So you know, I'm looking at it from an affordability standpoint, and maybe it's not something we can do this year, but maybe we could, instead of replacing some of the things this year, shift technology from places where it's not as necessary, such as with our three-year-olds and our four-year-olds, and shift that technology to TJ or somewhere else that needs it. The point here, I have no idea if this works, is this is the third payment in a three-year contract. I understand that. Contract. Thank you. And as, as we're looking forward, this may help us down the road, but it's not going to get us any money um, for this year unless we try to break a contract, which would probably cost more than it would be worth. So it's, it's a longer-term thing, but in terms of we need to find money this year, well, for the next fiscal year, this is a longer term discussion and not one that's going to find us any money tonight. I'll table my comment for when we talk about technology. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, John, I, I will say, I, I think to Phil's point, every decision we make today has a very, has a long term impact because like he said, you cut it today, you're probably unlikely to, 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 to get it back ever, which or you know, maybe not ever, but you're unlikely to get it back, which is why it's important to know what we're spending now, what we, whatever cuts we make, we need to make sure they're sustainable cuts, is what, uh, you know, I'll echo Phil's point. So it, it is important to know what's dropping off. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying we will get any money, but it's imp important to know what's dropping off and, and what we can project, especially with, if technology is what it is and it's, it's got more than a three-year life, maybe we'd look at stretching it somewhat. If, if that will work. And Erin and has a point about maybe we, we raise the bar a little bit with the use of technology. Um, it's, all in, it's all in what's, what's sustainable over the long term. So I, I think it speaks to all of that. Anyway. 
Um, yeah, I just want to point out on page um, seven, what you're looking at here is a breakdown of the office supplies. And this is one that, again, kind of looks like a bigger number when you look at it in its totality in the whole school division. But when you go in and you look at, um, and Hunter put in yellow, kind of some of those year to dates, you're looking at office supplies by school site. And uh, just as a reminder, when you look at it by school site, it is not a lot of money to run their offices. It's a very difficult area to cut, and, and we're still uh, reducing it minimally, but this showed up in their, their budget request this year, trying to increase office supplies. Um, this is paper and you know things that you need to function for an office. When you get down to what's called like the superintendent's office, that's where you're looking at the photocopiers and things for the whole uh, central office area and the Xerox management print service. That's the bigger number there. Uh, again, we just tried to break some of these things down for you. Um, there's some software that is considered office um, that we use for things that you know help us with warning announcements or, or various um, communication aspects. And then you have down on the bottom, you're just looking at some of those bigger subscriptions. And this is what Hunter was pointing out before is on the, on the very bottom um, where that yellow box is on the right. That's the finance section for office supplies. But what you'll notice is 12,000 of that is Veritime. It's a, it's a time card system, uh, automated system. So while it looks like a bigger number, there's a software component that we use district-wide that is sitting there. The line item above that, it looks like Lisa's office and, or personnel spends 18,500 just on pens and paper and crazy office stuff, but 17,000 of that is Keystone. That's our human resource system. So we've t we just wanted to break the office supplies out to, s to help you understand why you can't go in and just say, let's just cut office supplies X amount of percentage. These are the, the software systems that we use for the whole school division, and that's where they're sitting in central office. So, uh, the only thing that confuses me is that when I when I did a search and added the office supplies tab across the line item budget, I didn't get 83,150. I got 147,850. Uh, that would be 100. I had a question on that too because on page five, office supplies budgeted is 55,000. So I'm trying to figure out how many different things are in different numbers. Okay. Again, as, as I had explained earlier, that the office supplies numbers that shows on your list here does not include items like the Veritine and the software and things like that. Mr. Reitinger, I believe when you were looking at office supplies, you were looking at all three funds, the operating fund, the community service fund, and the food service fund. And this only looks at the operating fund. Yeah, and if you don't mind, because a lot of people don't understand that. Oh. Um, Certainly, well, yeah, 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 yeah. That that, for example, you know, the community services, uh, by and large, the the um, the functions that are included there, the, the largest being our daycare program, of course, uh, rec and parks, use of our facilities, our renters, um, you know, those sorts of things. It's largely self self funded, and the food service by law has to be a, a separate fund and accounted for for separately. The daycare uh, is largely self-funded. I know the school provides. Does it? Does the school still provide any support? Daycare. Other than uh, other than facilities. Oh, it, the there is a uh, a city council transfer to daycare to help offset uh, fees for low-income families. Okay. All right. Uh, city council, not for our budget. That is correct. Okay. Um, on page 10, and this was just for um, your information, to show you, uh, again, we're not making a cut to teacher salary, and I think that's really important. You know, the school board has been, um, had a mission for the last couple of years to increase teacher pay, to be competitive, and, and the school board has done a great job getting that done. The amount that was planned this year was just over 600, 660, I want to say, I don't have the number right in front of me. Um, and what this did is it went and reduced that to just over a half million planned increase. It's not a cut to teachers' current pay. So what this is showing you is on the 15-16 salary and the 16-17 salary, what the difference would be uh, from this current year going into next year. And then Hunter has put what that actual dollar increase. And what you'll notice is at the, at the low end of the scale for entry-level teachers, where we are already actually on steps one and two, I believe, we're actually ahead of our neighbors. 
Um, it's very little increase this year as we're recalibrating the scale. You have the same thing on the top end of the scale where we have been competitive and competitive for quite some time. In the middle section of the scale, which we have kind of called that red zone this whole budget season uh, on those big charts that we've had, that's where the, the main increases are is after we get through FY17, we'll be in a great spot going into FY18 where we have an equitable salary scale for every teacher in our school division, not just 50% of our teachers. Um, and this is what the scale looks like. And when you reduced that 20% of the planned increase at our last meeting, um, what Hunter, it took several days just working on this, trying to make sure that at the beginning and the end, there's no reduction there from what they saw on the cal recalibrated scale at the very beginning of the budget season. All of that uh, reduction came in that center section where we're working to close the gap the most. Um, so that's in its kind of small print, so I apologize for those of you that needed the big chart. Um, and I'll keep going unless you guys stop me, just so you know what's in here, and then I know you'll have a lot of questions. Um, on page 11, this is the sheet we talked a lot about at the last meeting, which Originally, when we went into this budget, we knew the insurance had gone up, you know, that half million dollars, and we still had to find another 245 to close the insurance gap. So the top four items are what we targeted first um, to close the gap, and that was a position at the high school that the high school had, uh, had not filled. Well, and that actually makes it even more confusing because this was like the NYP coordinator originally, but they were willing to give up a position. Um, the lease purchase of two buses, we were getting caught the cost savings there. We cut out the central office uh, project assistant uh, that the school board had in the budget. We also um, cut uh, or reduced the annual con contribution to the retirement fund. So we had made up that 246, and that's when we thought we were doing pretty good. Um, then below that is where we were last week, and this is um, the teacher salary improvement, which is reducing that slightly again on that red zone in the center. Um, and the uh, step for support, step for leadership, and then the topped out bonus. And that's kind of, that got us down to that 548,000 that we still need to find. Um, so behind that on page 12, this was that next category and again, it feels like we've been working on this for a month, but I think it's been like a week, really, um, trying to find these reductions. And we keep going back through, and we have a couple more tonight, but these are the ones um, at first glance that the school board saw. And when you look at group C, what you're looking at here is um, when we say cutting an elementary teacher, again, this is not cutting existing staff. If we had a flat budget and no increase this year, that would be a totally different ballgame. But these teachers are the three teachers the school board wanted to have in the budget because we know we're going to have the student growth on certain grade levels. But if we reduce one of those positions, um, that does reduce it again by 106,000. Um, the Mount Daniel assistant principal is in here, which we've heard about you know, tonight and, and before. The part-time gifted teacher, the two para days. And again, I don't have to read all these. I know the school board knows them well that it was going through the entire budget of what we've planned that is either new spending or what we felt like we could make an adjustment. It doesn't mean it's an easy adjustment. Um, in the center, you're seeing the materials reductions, and those are those lists we just went through of the 15%. How much can we afford to reduce all of our buildings, material supplies, and other items and not have an impact on instruction? Um, down on the bottom are all of your programs and we've cut out a lot of the specialty items, um, like Distinguished Scholar, we feel like that's an okay thing, you know, to cut out, that was an extra. Um, national Board stipends, I'm still very hopeful that uh, maybe working with the foundation or some other group that we could find a way to fund that. Reducing substitute usage, that is not an easy thing for us to, to reduce next year, $20,000. You do it except that you don't hire subs in those positions like, let's say you have a library media assistant and the assistant's gone, we would generally hire subs for positions like that and that one day you don't do it. And it may be asking our parents to help volunteer more and help us out with, with some of those things and I think they'd be willing to do that. But the principals, we're going to have to sit around the table and have a, a good strategy to reduce the 20000 It's right. not easy to do. Right, but the point is you wouldn't. No, it's, um, 
it depends on the building. If a teacher's out for the day and they have like an office person they can mobilize or, you know, because they're out half a day or out for three hours, they might pull somebody from staff. Every principal will deal with it differently. Um, in high school, it could be somebody who's just out for the last block of the day. And so they may, instead of hiring a sub that you almost have to pay them for a half day at least, um, you hire them for one block. I mean, you get somebody in there for one block and fill in. It, but it's not easy to do, but we, the principals felt like we could do it. Um, the elementary strings, again, this has been parent funded. It was a program we really wanted and the school board wanted to be able to have in the budget this year. Um, so we'll hang on another year with that. The pre-K contracted music was originally grant funded uh, through the Falls Church Education Foundation. We were able to fund that this year and it is uh, really important for our preschoolers. So we don't wanna see it go away, but we're going to have to find another source again. And I'm hopeful that working with the foundation or PTA that they'll be able to help close that because it's not a huge, huge amount of money. Um, and then the contingency reserve. And that's at uh, reducing that by that 46,000. So I know it'd be stood at right around 150, 154. Um, and the thing again about contingency, and I did email the school board and I, and I probably could have brought it tonight and I didn't think about it, but why the contingency is so important. And I hope all of you had a chance to look at the professional services expenses that we have had this year um, that far exceed um, the budget on, on some of our items. So um, the contingency could be also hiring that kindergarten teacher and para at the beginning of the year. Just as a reminder, I think we're still at 152 pre-enrolled and we've never seen that. Is it still 152, Ms. Laco? 100, are we still at 152 for kindergartners? Oh, great. <laughs> um, so we're at 153 <laughs> kindergartners, but usually it should be 80 or 90. So we, we just don't know. It may just be everybody lives here now and we're getting early pre-enrollment, or it may be an indicator it's going to be another big class, which means the contingency would assist to get a kindergarten teacher and a para, because that's about what 150 will do. More importantly, if they all show up, do we have room for them physically? We're okay if they all show up, assuming how many, I mean, it, if it's 250 mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or 60, then that, that'll be a different issue. Yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you walk me through the, princ the assistant principal? Because I wasn't aware it was a sort of half and a half as I heard today. It's actually a 1.0. It is an assistant principal, and she is paid to be an assistant principal, but she picks up the duties of PYP, which is, which is a lot. Um, you know, and, it, and they do it at TJ as well, at Thomas Jefferson. And is she PYP only for Mount Daniel? Yes, yes. It's just okay. part of the duties that are rolled into the assistant principal. Okay. Yeah. And then a part-time gifted teacher. Was hmm. this? That was additional. That was, that was it. That was. Degree. Right. Okay. So that was, a, that was, because I, I put 0.5 FTI. I remember we did that. Um, and then, all right, so you've got the two part professional days that we heard about at the podium earlier on. That's that would be cutting away time. And then the first grade power professional as well. Yeah, let me just, let me speak to that though, because I, in the school, we talked about this at our last meeting. It, we don't know really if it is a first grade. When we first started building the budget, we know we have pressure points at first grade, third grade, and fifth grade. If the school board should pass a budget where we can't have all three teachers that are planned, we're going to have to watch our numbers come in between June and September to figure out where those two teachers go. It may be they go to fifth grade and first grade. It may be first grade and second grade, but we're gonna literally have to look K-5 because we may have a grade right now that hasn't spiked and we get 20 students that move in on third grade or fourth grade that we didn't expect. And we may have an influx of students who move out on one grade level and that happens sometimes. So it, we don't really know where, if it's only, if it's two instead of three, we don't know where they're really going to go. Um, so a question I've asked before and I don't see it on here is the MYP coordinator, because that's $102,000. I know we've already advertised that position, but that was before we understood that the pressures we were gonna be under this budget cycle. Um, I would argue that I would rather see that position in our elementary schools than a coordinator position, um, especially given that I think that, as I have said at the previous meeting, I think we need to reevaluate our adoption of PYP and MYP if we are indeed in a place where we cannot fully implement it and we can't provide the training for our professionals to get past level one. We need to decide, look at this as a community, as an board, and it's a larger decision. Do we continue with this program? And I support the ideas behind the program, I support the philosophy, but if we can't really do it, 
I don't think we should keep spending money on it. And if we hire a coordinator for it, that's a person, and that's not a person you can take away. Yeah, Let, can it I, entrenches us. Yeah, and I can speak. I mean, speak to two things. And one, if this, if it's not the will of the school board or the community to have PYP, NYP, that's been part of our work plan. It's been part of what we've been asked to do. So, you know, if that's the direction we go in, it, you would find cost savings there in your annual fees. Um, but the the other aspect of that, and and this may be a hard answer, but if we're not going to allow the high school, middle school to to have that coordinator position, I think we are kind of halting. NYP from their perspective because it's been, they, they, they need assistance because they only have their IB coordinator. But the other piece of that is this was a high school planned position and they had frozen it. But we know right now high school has pressure points, especially in world languages. So that position should stay with the high school. We shouldn't take their position. We should be asking them now to go back to their master schedule and say, because we've already said no. They, I mean, they, they came to us a week or two ago and we know in French, for instance, that their numbers are up. And, okay, so I'm having a hard time thinking that we would have much larger class sizes in elementary school so that we can have fewer class, so we can have few smaller class sizes in French in high school. Um, I don't, I'm just, I'm having a hard time understanding that and I expect the community will as well. So if you could explain that in more detail why it's less important to have small class sizes in elementary than it is to have those programs in the high school. Yeah, it's not less important. It's that it was a high school position. And generally, when you have positions in secondary, you can move a position from one area to the other if that's where you need it in your master schedule. And so, I mean, it is a position that, that the high school has planned. I'm sorry, this is, I, I am so, I'm really confused by this. Isn't this just, this is money for a salary. So can't we just say, you don't have that money anymore and that money is going to where we need it? The school board can say whatever they want to. Okay, so, so I'm saying that. I would like to see, I'm saying that I don't, and that's something I guess the rest of the board can discuss. I'm saying that I think that that money should be allocated to our elementary schools. Um, and I also noted that if we cut the PYP, MYP dues, that's another $25,000. I really think you need, um, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I see what you're saying, Aaron, but I also think, um, we, it would be, we'd be hard pressed taking a position away from the high school without consulting the administration there. Um, we don't know what they had in mind for that position and if they're willing to give it up. I mean, it would be, we'd be hard pressed. That would be like going into the elementary school and saying, we really, really, really need a Russian teacher. So but, I, but they've already given it up to be an MYP coordinator. So and they were very, if we cut the MYP coordinator, I know, I, I, this is where I'm having a hard time with the logic here because no, no, they've I, already I, given it up to say we need an MYP coordinator. If we say, fine, we're not going to coordinate that program, and I'm, not, I'm just trying to explain, we're not, we're not going to do that this year because we can't afford to do it this year. And our, pressures, our pressure is in first, third, and fifth grade, and we're saying that that's district-wide. That is our pressure. That, that is where we should put our resources. If, if you've got a leak in your house, you fill that leak, you don't say, but I really wanted to paint my walls. I think, though, um, what I read from the high school is that they, they want that position. They're very supportive of that position. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sorry? Did you say something? Mm -hmm. oh. Keep going. Um, so is, um, is that right? I mean, I, I, that's what I understood. Uh, you know, again, it is, it's a position that's been in the high school. It, is, it was planned for them. They were not able to hire the person they needed because they, they literally can't find people certified in computer science or able to implement the program that they need. The candidates just aren't there. So they wanted to use this in an area where it helps middle school and high school, and they do feel like it's a pressure point. However, if we said you can't have the MYP coordinator, this is just about priorities for them and how they use their staff. And they would say, well, can we please get the French teacher and the other area because they, they'll have classes that will spike to 30 and I remember this this school board since January having that discussion where I brought you the list of the classes in the high school that were 30 um, and we do have those pressure points there so taking a position away I mean it, it, it can work if we think elementary is the priority it's just if they have class sizes that spike we, I, we just need to understand it ha it's going to be k-12 there's there's no level that's better than any other Yep, um, on page 13, you're just looking at these. This is a new sheet and, and a new section that just um, from some of the suggestions that came either from school board or community or um, staff. The first one was looking at an increase in athletic fees. 
And as you know, this is something people suggest. If you don't have high schoolers, they may not realize that our students already pay to play. And it would um, increase the first sport, sport by $125. Uh, well, not by $125. $25, um, and then it would still hold the family at 300, so no family would pay more than 300 if you have multiple students, and that would help us um, raise another $10,000, and what that would do is we would apply that as basically transportation fee to help offset uh, in our operating budget where we run buses and things for transportation. So um, that would allow us in our transportation area to use those funds to fund one of these other items. We also, and again, this was Dorian, so I'm going to make Dorian own this one since he loves being on the school board. The, the student parking. <laughs> this was this was your this was uh, Dorian's suggestion at our last meeting, and um, felt like there's lots of competition for parking spots, and this would raise ten thousand dollars if the fee. And again, I think it's a lot, but it goes to three hundred uh, for their parking spots. Right now at George Mason, they already paid two hundred. Okay, so I'll own up to this. <laughs> uh, I'll say that. Personally, I think that I live about for a 30 minute walk from school and it's no trouble for me taking the bus or asking for rides from other people or uh, taking a bike or some other means of transportation to get to and from school e um, even after practice, even before or after practice. So I honestly don't see the need for that much student parking, however, um, I think the overwhelming sense of students is that they would honestly hate it. And that, <laughs> uh, I think I, I heard this before where like you're trading a few dollars for um, a lot of annoyance. So. Yeah, so these are all kind of the, what Hunter has labeled them as increased revenue. Down on the bottom, um, what you're seeing is the other suggested reductions that dues associations and memberships, that's kind of that, um, that's the base number where it doesn't impact teachers, doesn't impact students, but just goes through and on some of those kind of odd organizations, you don't gather a lot that way. The other thing we wanted to point out on here is that um, traditionally when the Falls Church Education Foundation was set up, um, they had kind of, I'm going to call it seed money really, from the FCCPS that would make sure that they had that base of 10000 every year. They had requested that uh, we no longer plug that in. So we want to show that that's an additional 10 that you know we can use somewhere else. And so it brings it down instead of that 912, looking at that 902, 902,000. Um, the reduced the central office supplies, that was just going by that line by line budget um, that, we, that we were showing you earlier where we went in trying to not touch um, the actual school sites, but that's the central office area, trying to reduce copying, things like, uh, you know, like all, all the work packets that we do, we still do a lot of paper, so getting more focused on electronic, which is hard. Um, reducing some of those office supplies, but again, it's not a lot of money, but it's, uh, it just kind of all adds up. But this, because the schools already feel like they don't have enough, we just don't feel like we can go in and reduce their school budgets. Conferences, workshop, and travel, taking that down again. Um, and so by the time you do that, what you, it, you know, it gave you a little bit of additional funding, uh, which is that 60,000 number. Is that right, Hunter? Yeah. So we, we, we identified another 60,000. What I have not been able to do um, is identify um, enough for a teacher, the three teachers and the assistant principal and keeping all of that in the budget and reducing $912,000. And we have gone line by line on that 15%. Now, we haven't talked about things like, okay, let's not run buses, we're 2.2 square miles. But that has other implications, and we've talked about all those things as people send them. Um, one of those would be we couldn't even handle the traffic probably if we did that um, on, on Haycock and Route 7, you know, if you didn't run buses at all. Um, but again, those are totally different discussions where we're talking about big shifts or changes. And we can entertain some of those, but, you know, these scenarios were put together where we're trying to maintain the priorities of small class size, where we're talking about just the positions that were planned, trying to stay true to what we said we were going to do on teacher pay, and not decimating any one area of the budget. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of where we're sitting. So, and I know all of you have looked as well, so if you have, you know, questions or, or things that you 
think could be reduced, um, certainly we can entertain those too. Okay, one question before Phil. The three teachers plus the assistant principal are I'm sorry, say that again. You said, you, can't hear either, sir. you said what you still couldn't find was enough for the three teachers and the assistant principal, and that would total what? Uh, 33330 for everything in the t in the top of group C and it's 288 for the elementary teacher Matt Daniel um, assistant principal part-time gifted teacher you add in the paraprofessional it gets you to about 450 about 300 so uh, I feel like we've sort of started to go through this information twice now, and yeah. I, I would, I, I might suggest a different process, which is we just start going through, because, you know, Tony's, sorry, Dr. Jones has mentioned a bunch of different figures. I certainly will still argue, despite the impact, for higher cuts in some of those areas, and that's just a discussion to have. Obviously, the board has to discuss them, but I think we ought to go topic by topic with the least controversial first and sort of run calculations and recognizing we don't have to have a final decision today, at least get some degree of agreement and say like, you know, I'd like to walk out of here tonight saying we're $100,000 short and we need to save these positions or we're 150000 or whatever it happens to be. But, you know, I think we started to do that with the earlier pages you've had here. And it feels to me like that sort of, you know, rather than talking about the MYP coordinator eight times when it circles around again and again, that that might be a more effective process if, if if that meets with the chair's process. I'm happy to do it however you want. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think the idea is to try to get as concrete as possible, but not try to hold ourselves to getting to 912 tonight because that would be a fool's errand and it would take forever and we'd probably hurt each other. We just need to know so we can run some scenarios for you. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so something else that I brought up before that I don't see on here is a, um, is a reduction in the leadership step. Um, and I've said this before, we're asking our teachers to take a cut, we're cutting our topped out bonuses for our staff, and I don't disagree that everybody in the system works hard, including our leadership, but, and I've said this before, you leave from the front and I'm willing to give up my salary if our leadership is also willing to take a cut, and I think that that got lost in what happened last week and it turned into city council needs to give up their salaries. That was not my point. My point was that if we're gonna ask our lowest paid people to take a cut, we should also ask our highest paid to take a cut. Well, I think more to the point. We're and I keep seeing that as a zero on here. Right, but we also need to remember when, when we're making decisions, we're not asking people to take cuts. We're, we're making the decision to tell people you're taking cuts. So, I mean, let's just be real clear that we're, we're not. I know, but I feel like we get into a lot of semantics here. And w the, the thing is that leadership is getting a step. And it, every time I look at this, it comes back as zero. And I'm having a hard time making decisions because it seems like we're given a list of preordained choices. And our community has said that too. We get the same list of choices, but we don't get to add anything to it. So I can say, why don't we see about cutting the MYP coordinator? Why don't we see about reducing leadership staff? But I don't get that back in here. It does not come back to me on this list. It doesn't go out to the parents in the community on the budget tool. And I think that presents us with a false choice and it looks like you're saying, here's the only things you get to cut and it's what I say you get to cut. So I have a hard time listening to people say the school board's crafting this budget because I don't think we're crafting a budget. I think we're being told what we can take input in and out of the budget. I was hoping that I made it clear at the start when I said everything should be considered on the table. I think we need to talk about the leadership. I think people also need to understand what is involved when you say leadership. I think some people think it's only central law. Can you let me finish? I can, but I'm sorry, it's not, it's not in here. So it's hard for me to say what Anything that is. we want to be in here can be in here. This is Tony bringing us ideas. I do have it, but that's not in here. I have this, I have the packet. No, no. This one. No, I don't have this. But it's not in. Right. It's but, not in here. That's as a, our job. As a something is on to, the list. If something isn't in there, and we want to put it in there. That's our job. If I asked for wanna, it at the last meeting. But if we want to do things, I'm telling you, I asked for it at the last meeting. It's not in here. I've said that. 
I asked for it at the last meeting. I was very clear about it. It didn't show up in here again, and that's why I'm asking for it again, and that's why I'm frustrated, because I have asked for it, and I see it show up again in here as a zero, and I see that MYP is still not in here. So again, I feel like I'm being presented with a false choice. I feel like I'm just seeing the same things over and over again, but suddenly I'm gonna increase student parking fees, and you know, I'm gonna maybe cut professional development some more, um, and I, I, I'm just, I'm frustrated. It's nine o'clock at night. I don't get a lot of sleep at night. It's frustrating to come in and see the same thing every single time and have suggestions overrun and not considered, and maybe the rest of the board feels differently, but, and everyone talks about what the board wants and what the board did before, but I'm new to the board. I'm not on that board, and decisions of a prior board don't bind a, a current board. Right, no, I just think Tony needs to explain what is in that, and I agree, leadership has to take a hit. But I think we also need to understand who is involved in that, because I think a lot of people think it's only central office, and it does include the principals, who, you know, have not been getting raises either. So, so I have a question. We've looked at purchase services, books and materials, capital additions and replacement. Do we have access to the salaries and wages and benefits and the other stuff? For the actual... I mean, for the budget. It's in, I mean, it's in the budget, yes, but we as haven't given you it. As a lump sum. Yeah, I mean, we haven't given it to you by person. Is that what you're asking? I, I don't know whether you do it by person or if there's some way to protect that information, but I don't know whether you do it by building or you do it by... Book. Yeah, it shows up in the line item by building, but it's, it's not real easy to see because we don't list people's names, so to speak. So, I mean, it is, you'll see the principal assistant principal together, but the salary scale is pretty easy to see. Um, and I will say, if I, if I can address that, Ms. Gill, and I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful in any way, but what I try to do at the work session is the will of the school board. And at the last meeting, you know, I asked for clarification, and on that first sheet, which is where we talked about that, uh, the, the board gave me the direction, and I followed up the next morning before I even sent it out, making sure what I heard was the board was approving everything that was on that first page for salary. And if we're going back into a different direction, I just need somebody to tell me that because I, I need to hear from seven people or six people who are at the meeting to really understand what goes in here. And I try to go through, and, and when you ask for those things, pull them if it's the will of the school board. But that, that's the direction I need. And I think that's what Hunter and I want to know tonight. If there are things that you want us to put in a scenario, we need to know what those are. And is it the will of the school board to do it? But I, again, I'm going to repeat myself. And we can rewatch the meeting. I did make it clear that I wanted to see those things on the table. And I'm surprised. And maybe it's not the will of the rest of the school board to see it. I don't know. I don't think anyone else has weighed in. Perhaps no one here else wants to see that information. And then maybe it's just my will. Um, but I, I would like to see it, and I, I did say it before, so I am confused because I was at the meeting and I said I'd like but to see did, it. But you did, and we discussed it, and, and I apologize. But if did I you didn't discuss it with that. me? I don't know. I went and said that we discussed it, and this is what you all agreed to. I don't remember agreeing to it, and I specifically asked to see other information, and it's not here. All right, so let's get details. Right. Let's get details on. Mm, sorry. So just get us all details on what is involved in the leadership step. How many people, what the dollars are, who is already topped out because some of them will fall under the topped out because they're not gonna get something otherwise so that we know. And then we can look at it from there. John, I was gonna say in that 50, is, are these two categories, the salaries and benefits, are they in, are they in that 50 page document? Okay. I mean, it, it goes down, this document goes down from a couple of the top levels. It, it doesn't go all the way down so you could break it out by individual person. But, so I, I guess, and Phil, I'll, I'll let you have your say in a, in a quick second, but is that, I don't know if the word is a sacred cow, but can we look at that in terms of cuts? Look at... Or those are, uh, by the way, are, are there any raises or whatever we're proposing built into this? Built in, which page are you on? He's on I'm on the, I'm on the, 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 the 30 point, the proposed 30.5 million in salaries and wages and then the 10.9 in benefits. Well, so, well. Someone say all that is available on that. Yes. It's all up there. Okay. Well, okay. I think, but, but the point is, 
for the FY17, for FY17 numbers, it would reflect everything that you've got behind it. So it would reflect support staff getting their increase, leadership getting their increase. This number on page two reflects everything that comes after page two, right? In terms of the F. Because I think that's what you're asking, right, Michael? Yeah. What is built into the numbers yeah. on page two? Yeah, and, yeah. and Aaron has my documents, so I don't have those, but I think that's, good. Well, that's what you have. That's our line item. That's the line it's item detail. Mr. Yeah, Lawrence. Just, so, so uh, you notice there's a pattern to the way they set it up. Uh, any of those lines, it, it talks, you, you need section, just pick a section. You have, uh, uh, John, you, you have a... Well, you, I mean, it, it's, on the one hand, it's very helpful because it's so detailed. On the other hand, it's tough to understand because it goes by school. So you'll have the same 10 or 15 line items well, that's for my, every school. my point exactly. So that if you have those 10 or 15 line items, are, any, are, are they all sacred cows? Or is there any of them that is... Well, I think if you look at them, some are sacred Maybe that's a hunter question. Some are sacred cows only in a sense of it's FICA, it's VRS, it's retirement, do, do, does that retirement, make sense? health. You see, each, group. each section has the same categories. And that, uh, yeah. Right. So, so some are sacred cows just in the sense of we don't have a, a choice on whether or not we pay insurance. And I asked Tony today, I said, can we delay paying VRS for a year? And was, <laughs> she was nice not to laugh, but the answer was no. All right, so, so is it, an, like, like I'm saying, is, are there any non-sacred cows in there? Oh, yes. I mean, everything is in here. Which means? He's talking about business things, like health insurance, you mean? Well, no, I mean, off, office supplies. I'm, I'm working blind here because I don't have it, but I'm saying, is anything in there? No, 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 you read it. But, yeah, I mean, everything that, that she has, that Tony has talked about in terms of cutting is in here by school. So you know, maintenance services, conferences, dues, office supplies, books and subscriptions. I mean, all the things that are in here are separated out here. So there are some sacred cows in the sense that we can't touch retirement. Here, here's, here's why I ask. The way this is laid out, it seems as if what is on, what, we, what is available to us to, what is available to us to cut are three categories, purchase services, books and supplies, materials, and the capital additions and replacements. It doesn't seem as if salaries, wages, and benefits, which are over there, are, 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 are touchable, if you know what I mean. Well, they, and, they and I'm are, asking, are those, are they? They are, they're just like people. Any, I mean, those categories are all, because if you don't hire a teacher, you're touching that category. If you reduce the topped out bonus, you're touching that category. So those, those categories are touchable, it's just they're people. They're not the, the, those discretionary things. I, I, I understand, yeah. and to the extent there's movement. Does it create some? Does it does it create some flexibility? You have I don't. I'm just using a number. A level eight leave, and you pull. You hire level five. That's I'm just throwing a yeah. number. Do we have something in there? Does, you know, at the end of the day, do we do we end up netting something? We're looking for every. We're scratching around for pennies here. Yeah, so no, every every bit helps. That's that's what I'm trying to look at. Right. You you. Lose one, you hire at a lower salary or something like that for somebody who's new. But I, I think that the answer is it's in there already. A couple of things. First of all, um, Mr. Lawrence, just to let you know that the that the Chavern chart um, that you're, you've been shown tonight, what it, what it reflects on the revenue side is the revenue to the operating budget uh, that was approved by city council two weeks ago. Okay, on the spending side, this reflects the um, the, the school board uh, what what they um, their request that, that they uh, acted upon as as of um, early March. Therefore, the reductions have have not been been shown in this category. To to your point, Mr. Ankuma, that in um, salaries, wages, and and benefits. Um, the, the bulk of those are um, 
salaries for employees of who uh, ha have co will have contracts and then have benefits associated, you know, with, with those positions, primarily FICA, retirement, health insurance, um, long-term disability, group life insurance, those so workers' comp, those sorts of things. And the, to the extent that the school board, um, you know, wishes to either increase or decrease those positions, there, there would be a change to those categories on the Chavern chart. In addition to those salaried positions, there are also uh, time card wages that are included in the first category, and the only benefits that apply to those would be uh, FICA, which is Social Security, um, or workers' compensation. Uh, one of the proposed reductions of taking down the substitute usage would in fact impact those time card wages. Um, so th th those are, are time card employees. Um, so that there, there are other, other uh, categories uh, in, in salaries and, and wages other than the salaries. You know, there is, you know, are overtime payments, there are substitute payments. The EPDs are in there, um, yes. Did you have something? Uh, I guess um, you know I. I can't say I'm I'm as frustrated as Aaron is because I've had the, the gift of missing the last two meetings and not having to go to the district because <laughs> um, I've been on travel. Cherish but in the, in the last ten minutes, I've gotten pretty close. <laughs> and and the, and the reason is it goes back to what I said before. This is we're having a broken process right now. You know we're just circling around and talking about an issue and then moving on and circling around talking about it again. And the problem is, and the reason Aaron's getting frustrated is, you know, I mean, there is a place on this chart where it says, you know, step for leadership and there's a zero for no respected cut. You know, I still think there needs to be a number there. And the problem is that, you know, there's sort of a general feeling, but we're not, we're not getting down to the details on anything. And so we're not reaching a consensus. And, and each one of us has lines in the sand, right? Like, you know, I will tell you right now, if the final budget cuts the Mount Daniel assistant principal, I won't vote for it, no matter what else. But, you know, we're not going to uncover what people's real priorities are and what they need to get done and whether we can build a budget that everyone will agree to and maximize these things. And still we start talking about these things item by item and trying to build it out. So, you know, we, and I, I applaud the work the administration has done to lay this out in categories. But we just need to start going through it now and stop saying, well, here's one way to look at it, here's another way to look at it, here's another way to look at it. You know, we, and I, I'm not criticizing anybody around here. I'm just saying we need to have a logical approach to solve this and to come to ground on specific concrete expenditure issues or we're not, we're going to get you know, the end of the day and it's going to be no progress and we're going to come back here next week and it's going to be the same thing and there's not going to be any progress. So, you know, if we could, like I said, I'd like to get to a place where it's, you know, we have $200,000 left to save. Um, and we knew these positions are still in question. And so I just think we need to, you know, stop raising issues and talking around things and just talk about and you know, limit ourselves, show some process discipline and talk item by item. That's what I'd like. So, Phil, while, while you were um, doing that, talking about line by line, I, that's kind of what I was doing. I just have some questions on some of these and whether or not, you know, there's any wiggle room for, for some of these items. And not because I'm questioning the items themselves. I'm just not sure where, what, they're, um, what they entail totally. So uh, I was just going to ask about a few of those, if that's okay, just to clarify. So under uh, purchase services, um, <clears throat> so for instance, I see insurance. Um, is there any way to, I, and I know I'm going to be nickel and diming because that's what we have to do at this point. I mean, we really have to chip away and so that's what we're going to do. Um, so insurance, well, I know like for some insurance, if you have a higher deductible, you pay less. Is that something that is possible? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just asking. Hmm? For our um, commercial general liability, you know, insurance and auto insurance, th things like that, um, 
not, not really. We do, we do take the insurances and put them out to bid on, on a regular basis, and we actually work w very closely with an with a, um, insurance consultant who, who, who monitors and helps us get the best rate. Um, one area, actually where Dr. Jones and I have, you know, have looked at this has to do with, with the student laptop computers and the, the insurance on those to make sure that if they're damaged or broken that we can get them re replaced quickly. And in fact, yeah, and and w actually between last year and this year, we did. I think we did increase the deductible on that as well to save to save about fifteen thousand um, dollars. I'm not sure we can go back and revisit that particular category again, but. but okay, yeah. but that that helps a lot. So, I, I, like I said, I just was asking because I'm not sure. So, um, and. Uh, I know uh, we talked about the photocopier leases already, and like something like technology maintenance service contracts, is that something that can be um, revisited or um, lowered? I, so I don't know because I don't know what that all entails. I'm not the expert here, so. Yeah, we went back in and pulled all the line by line just to see what was in there. Uh, most of that is um, maintenance services that we need to maintain safety and security of our system and all of those big items. Um, but again, we, I mean, I've got the line item if you want if you want to look at it. But it's we went back in looking at all of those too, and we do look at our software every year. I mean, we try to go back in and look at it and make sure we're getting things off the list. If we teachers don't have a lot of usage, or you know, if we've added something new when we put something new on, we try to take something off. So. And Rick had reviewed those for us already uh, earlier this year as well. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to ask a lot of things that, are, um, that I'm going to do with this. I don't know what you can do with, but um, I do have a question about the Pathways program. Um, now, I'm familiar with this program, but I, I, um, I know it's a way for students to enter NOVA. This is the same one, that, to go on to a four-year college during two years at NOVA. What is our fee associated with that? Um, it is on page four. It's about the fourth one down. Um, this pathway. Yeah. What does that entail? Like, why? Why are we paying? What are we paying? George Mason University. It's a. Well, that's the cost of participating in the program. And other students can't just apply and get into the program. It's you know. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we have actually staff that, um, that work on that program as well, and it is through NOVA, and it's trying to help students who don't have that um, history of going to college and their families or need that assistance, and so it's a lot of tutoring and assistance for those students. So, yeah, it's for students really that it's tutoring, it's yes, and EIP is the same thing, which is um, about the third one down under that, which is the ESOL dual enrollment, and that's for students who come from families uh, where they would be first generation going to college, and we don't have a tremendous amount of students participate, but it's life changing for those students. Sure. Right. Yeah, no, I just wasn't sure where that. We do have more this year. Yeah, that's that amount. Yeah. Teacher, yeah. There's an item on here, it's very small, but it's student travel. Um, where is it? Ah, uh, I'm not sure where it is. Mm. Top of page four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that item. It's it's um, athletics and it's also other student activities like it's the band. Um, the, the, oh, sorry. Oh. And, you know, for the uh, student activities, bands, clubs, those sorts of things that they're traveling. Is, uh, does that include that? That's beside the buses. That would be like like if you had to get a. Um, what you asking me? Um, like, like a coach type bus if for distance travel or hotels? It, that's exactly what it, what it would be. It would, it, it would not be um, contract buses. That would, that's under contracted transportation. This would be more for, um, for hotel rooms and, and um, other vehicles, those sorts of things. Thank you. And um, let's have two more. Um, human resources, professional services, what is that? 
that's on um, four, and it's uh, right under Esau Duel and Roman. It's about eight down, eight or nine down. And a um, couple. <laughs> um, physicals and drug testing, I know it's only $6,000, but um, is that for our employees? Okay, bus drivers, thank you. Okay, and then there's only a $1,000 item. I'm kind of embarrassed asking about it, but I just would like clarification. Funding for national level student competitions, is this, um, what type of competitions would this be? <laughs> well, and, and this, 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 this is sort of a, a, you know, a, a goodwill nod to um, to an to a, a item that, that comes up every few years. For example, our robotics team went, went to St. Louis, and um, you know, this, this would help defray the costs there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, that's it for now. Thank you. Well, yeah, let's have Dorian first, and then let me suggest a path forward to get some of these at least behind us. So, Dorian? Um, mine was in the, on page four, towards the middle, the eight automated substitute scheduling. How much, like, how much work does that get off the table? <laughs> yeah, that's a system actually that we didn't have back in 2011, and all of our assistant principals or front office staff had to call for subs, make sure classes were covered. Now subs register with the system. It starts calling first thing in the morning when a teacher puts in their absence, um, so it is all automated, and to, to do away with that system puts a huge burden on somebody in every building. It's, it's tough if it's not automated. Yeah, it also tracks our leave as well and got us away from paper. So let me suggest we start on page three and begin with the suggested decreases in red on the right and see how many of these we can get through to page six that we agree on and at least we can put those aside. I've got other ones in here that I would like to raise, but let's just go through quickly and see if anybody has problems with what's been reduced or well, with what's been reduced, and then we can go back and see if we've got specific other things we'd like to reduce. Lawrence? I'm okay with what's... I'm okay with what's the three items that have been already reduced. And then I have a question, actually a question about, it's still on page three, uh, with the student tuition at uh, Thomas Jefferson. How many students do we have there, and is there, do we cap the number of students who potentially okay well actually let's let's start with um, that and also the the career center I wanted to come back to in terms okay. of how many kids do we cap and because those are big numbers that's already three four uh, for Thomas Jefferson High School, it is three uh, incoming freshmen each year that we fund for a total of 12 students that can attend. Uh, so that would be three freshmen, three sophomore, three junior, three senior. And again, what we pay for Thomas Jefferson is pretty close to what our per student amount is in Falls Church City. And just as a reminder, you know, their parents are taxpayers in the city. They apply. It's competitive. Basically, we're taking our, our local dollars because we're mainly locally funded and we're transferring those to pay for those students. Um, we have budgeted for uh, nine students um, next year. It, that would be the six that we know are, are in, the, in the upper levels. And um, I, I did uh, do some checking around, and we believe that we will have three freshmen attending for a total of nine. Now, sometimes our students get accepted and choose not to go, and they decide they want to stay at George Mason, but we can take up to three each year. So this number covers all kids? No. no. It covers nine. nine. Okay. Um, Arlington Kirsten, I, I don't know if it was on this same sheet or not. I apologize yeah. if it is. Yeah, um, 
Oh, I see it. Okay. Arlington Career Center is an area that is, uh, as you, if you remember, in the budget this year, that's part of the plan to increase in tuition. And it is um, a growing program for us. It does, when you look at college and career readiness across the United States, this is an area that uh, most high schools are focused on. And we have worked very hard at George Mason to diversify our programs. And this number has almost doubled, Mr. Kimball, um, almost doubled in the last year or two, just with the number of students that, yeah, that want to go and take everything from automotive to cosmetology to uh, computer, you know, programming. But it is offering something to our students that I think they've become very aware uh, that it's there and what a great resource it is for our students. We have to pay tuition. And we also have some special needs uh, programming there as well. Um, Mr. Kimball, do you know the total number? We uh, talked about that just this uh, morning. This year was 44. We had budgeted for 22 or 24. 44 actually was spent this year. What's the, what's the eligibility criteria? It's, it's basically when they're working with their counselors, um, they're making sure they, you know, meet usually their juniors and seniors going into that program. And it's the students that have an interest in going and taking cosmetology or instead of taking, you know, band or whatever they want to take at George Mason High School. So, I mean, it's not like there's an eligibility. It's just basically we have this partner with Arlington, this partnership, and they offer programs that we are not quite big enough to offer for our students. I, I guess what I'm asking is, where do you draw the line? At some point, if, if 100 fo folks show up for cosmetology, I don't think we can accommodate that. Well, I think it's what I would say, and again, I, you know, this will be the will of the school board. These are those big decisions. I would say those parents would come and say, at what time do you draw the line on the International Baccalaureate? It's the same thing because it's really what are we going to offer all students for what they need, and we can either do that or we can't, and we don't offer that level of career and technical education in our high school. So we could cap it, but I think we would be hurting children, hurting our students by doing that. Uh, I, I mean, not, all, okay. not all students are college bound. Um, everybody has, every student comes to our schools with different talents and different abilities and different interests. We need to accommodate all of our students. That's our job, to educate our students. It is not to just prepare them for a four-year college. Some of these kids need to go to that career center so they can be gainfully employed either right after high school or shortly thereafter. Some people actually choose that track, believe it or not, even in this community. If I'm right now, we're talking about the tuition for the governor's schools. And I'm, yeah, are we going down is. vertically in this here? was about the career center yeah i was going to come back to that but when lawrence raised it i mean generally i on this on the general topic of external tuition whether governor schools or um or arlington career center i don't support cutting those i agree very much with what margaret said you know, and when we send kids externally to the schools although we pay for it you know we've got less burden on our own schools so you know, in a lot of cases, it's actually a saving proposition for us. We spend less on the tuition than we would if that person was here all the time. So I, I think economically, is it worse to wash? And I agree very much with Margaret that you know, we've got a responsibility as a board to, to meet every student where they are, whether it's the high-end students who want to go to TJ Math and Science School or the Arlington Career School students. So um, I, that's just where I am, and I, I think that's important. Okay, anybody else? I mean, the, the other, the, the point I think Michael was making wasn't reducing, but it was capping. So finding a number that would be reasonable and saying we don't go above that, which, you know, unless it's below the 44 kids we have in here, it's obviously not gonna do anything for us this year, but I, my only point is Every unpleasant thing is on the table. So that's why I wanted to be the one who raised something that, you know, not going to TJ, not doing governor's schools, not doing career center, I hate the idea. But I hate the idea of every single cut here. So, Hunter, you wanna say something? Okay, so why don't we go down and just do what we've got in red on the right, so. Well, but there are some items on here, John, that are not in red that I, I know, what I wanna do is see if we can come to quick agreement on stuff in the red or see if there's anything that we want to put on hold but the more we can check off because none of these figures are very big 
And I think the bigger fight is not going to be these pages. So what I'd like to see if we can come to a general agreement as to what number are we trying to find going forward. So if you could just humor me for four pages. So on the first page, does anyone have any problem with the decreases for staff development, instructional staff development, or memberships? Well, so if you've got the first one on here is staff development, conferences, and workshops. I don't know that I've got a problem with it, but I, if I, if I did, if I, if I aggregated conference workshop travel across the board, which included school board travel, it hit 177.9 um, as opposed to 126.100, but that's a larger category. You know, I, I would suggest that we work not just this $10,000, but we at least try to cut that 15% across the board. So there, I'd, I'd make that bigger and, I mean, it's not, this is actually kind of, I guess it's about, what, 7 or 8%. I'd suggest we do 15% on workshop-related workshop travel across the board. Just quickly, and in order to, I thought, assist the school board, um, broke out the uh, travel for professional development for our teachers, our professional staff, which would include like the speech pathologists, psychologists, social workers. And if you, on page four, I've broken out the student travel and then the other conferences and travel, which would include the school board's um, travel in that category, um, you know, tr and, and uh, travel in the principal's offices and other, other administ administrators. Um. Okay, so I, again, I'd say 15% across okay. the board. Okay, just um, except for school board, where I'd be happy to cut it. Well, well, well yeah, I, well, I, Mr. Writing, you had, you had um, noted that, that numbers didn't match, and I certainly wanted to yeah. explain no, no, that. I, I said this, cat, this is a smaller category than we're looking at. I agree with you. Mike. Right. So the categories you're looking to, to lump together and cut 15% are staff development on three, student travel on page four. Is that in there, too? Because that's other travel. I'm... I aggregated. We've got other conferences, conferences and workshops, travel, and that was 177.9, and it's the same uh, line item number. I'd have to look back to see okay. what it was. 5,500. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we've got theoretical buy-in on 15% for that. We just need to find out exactly what that includes since Nothing that I see here gets us close to 176. Okay. I mean, I know this sounds small, but I actually wanted to understand why 10 and not 20. But Phil says 15, which probably doubles that. So, I, mean, I think we need to go full actual to see how much of that's knowledge for the person next door. Speech therapist who travels around, or you know, we need to go look at that to make sure we can make that cut. I mean, no okay. Hunter, do you remember the basis for this 10,000? Uh, I, actually, actually, I b believe the basis for for the ten. Actually, this ten thousand suggested. Well, the I, b 10, I believe Tony, you were the one who who came up with yeah, this initially. What we actually do as yeah. far as like uh, staff development, you know, yeah. and paying for bringing people in, yeah. sending people out, and we just said we're going to make a reduction there. Yeah. What we haven't looked at though is the the mileage component. That, yeah. That yeah. And that. and so we need to, look to Mr. Reidinger's point that he, he brought up earlier. Um, one of the things we did do this week or last week, anyway, in the, in the, within the last week, is to look at, at the historical actuals, the patterns there, and to identify areas where um, budgeted amounts had not been all expended and had made um, a recommendation for further reductions, which um, I think are on the last page or the next to last page. Okay, but the bottom line is get the categories Phil was talking about so that we all know what it is and the idea is 15% off of that. But it'll, it'll depend on what's, what's in there. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but we are not including student travel on page four, right? I don't want to. Okay, so but it would... So it would not it would not include student travel. What 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 is student travel? Oh. 
All right. So all, and, and that covers what? The, the, the bus or the driver's pay? What does that cover? Generally, it, it's expenses related to um, going to and from events. So it, it could be vehicle rentals. It, it could be uh, mileage reimbursement. It could actually be hotel rooms for, you know, for... If it's the sleepover. Yes. Or like coaches, some of those Williamsburg trips that you guys make. Okay. 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 All right, down to... Uh, still, on, still on page three. So down to instructional staff development, reducing that by 16-1. Yeah. Um, can I ask what, I know this, this is what, training for teachers? Yeah, it has everything in there from uh, international baccalaureate training. Sorry. Everything in there from, like, international baccalaureate training. If we hire a new teacher, they, they need to go to the training in order to teach the course. Um, so it has items like that. Um, Lisa, feel free to chime in. Um, any of the training that we do for if we are training on our math, our RTI training. Um, trying to think what, what's in there for next year. Um, the audits. I don't, did they end up coming out of that line item? There's a separate line item. Yeah, for audits. yeah. But it's all, it's all the professional development that we do for teachers. Like this year we brought in trainers. We try to bring in trainers so we can train a whole staff if we can. Are they um, mandated? Mandated training? No, but, you know, training is essential if you want teachers to, <laughs> yeah, to, to know, you know, how to utilize the curriculum and continue to, for their instructional practices, it's important to teachers. I mean, if it's not mandated, can it take a bigger hit? We can certainly go in and look, but. Um, well, I guess one question uh, is, is so here you go. I go with this one. Is the 108 that's in there, was that an increase over last year and we would be decreasing an increase, or was that flatlined from last year and it would be a real we decrease? Have flat. We haven't increased that. And, okay. and as you know, our teachers say we don't have enough. Right. Yeah, so I think when, when we go through this, I'm not thinking everything is going to get checked and locked. And if you, you know, if we don't change 16.1 now, it's more the idea, can we reduce staff development services? And then if we want to come back and, you know, say, do we need to take a little more? We can. But I think okay. if we try to get a, to a final number on everything, we're, we're not going to be getting anywhere tonight. All right. Briefly, John, I, I think I, I'm happy to have this stay on the list, but this would be sort of like my you know, Ch more. last in, first out. In other words, I, I would, I'd rather not cut staff development at all if we could get away with it, because I think that's how you keep, that's one of the, one of the things that keeps great teachers is you're helping develop them professionally. And so. Uh, yeah, I, and recognizing them as national board certified and giving them stipends because of the, I mean, so yes. I, I get all of that, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, so I'm happy to have it stay on the list, but I, this is one of the ones that I, I'd like to sort of see if you could back out out of a cut list at the end. Okay, fair enough. Um, 2,400 out of memberships. I think it's gotta be more. Okay, going back to where are the lists? So two, of, two of the items listed are on the chopping block, eh? On there. The best you can get is about 6,000 out of that category that is... The PYP and MYP? No, no, no. If you include that, that's a different ballgame. We're going to not be authorized to... So, I, so I, had, I did have a question on the PYP and MYP. If we, if we had a K through 5 elementary school, would we pay one PYP membership? But because we have a K1 and a 2-5, we pay it twice? Yes. So, I mean, I don't know. Could we... Can we do it two through five and not do K one? I don't. I'm just. I, I'm trying to think. That's eight thousand dollars. So I'm trying to figure out. Like, is, is you know. I mean, that's frustrating. It's the way our school system is set up, and we're get. We have to pay for it twice. Eight thousand per school. Right. And if but if we had a K through five, we'd pay it once. Okay. I, I think we should uh, sort of consider. put a note there for all of us to think because that was not something that I'd focused on. That we had, you know, one program that goes over one grade set. But it's paid for twice because well, we have two physical schools. 
Oh yeah, no, it would be giving up. Yeah, just so we're aware, we would be giving up PYP as far as authorization at a school if we in order not, to do that. If we did not offer it at Mount Daniel. Right, you would, you would not be an authorized PYP school at Mount Daniel if, if we didn't pay the dues and stay. So that would be definitely a staff question to see if they support it. It kind of depends what's going on, but we get a lot of advocacy at the federal level, and then VSBA feeds into NSBA as well. Um, so, I mean, that, that's something the school board could certainly look at, but it's generally, you want this. I'm sorry, Tony, I think that's right. Okay, I can live without advocacy. I just can't. Yeah. $2,000, I can live without advocacy. Well, I think the, the bigger point is we wouldn't be living without it. We need to we need to double check on that too. How that if that has any impact on VSBA? All right. Um, I, I, just, I, I think we ought to maximize that. You know, people are going to have to pay stuff, but you know that's that's the area of diminishing resources. I, I, the administration certainly knows better than I do about what can actually be charged at as user fees and what can't be, and where we can have. Some I would, I would maximize whatever we could do in this space, and I'd like to get it, you know, far above $1,600. Oh, sure. What about the athletic officials? Do we need those because of VHSL? Yes, yeah, you have to have the same thing. Are we, are we doing new yeah. stuff or just the red um, <laughs> Well, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to do the reds and then come yeah, back. Yeah, let's do, let's, yeah, no, let's, let's go back to, all right, over on page four, contracted preschool music eliminated, 4,900. Okay. All right, page five, uh, reducing student classroom materials by 27.5. Is that the right amount? Too much or too little? 10%. I mean, basically, basically 10%. Yeah. That was the increase that I asked yeah. for, so we're just taking it back out. Yeah, if you took any more out, you would be taking us backwards from where we've been the last decade. Mr. Reichler's like. Well, that was, I mean, it was, it was a nice, it was a hope we get it, but if we can't get it, I can understand that one. Okay. Uh, textbooks down 25. Is, is there any way to reduce textbooks further? Um, given like what we can put on the computers um, for the high school at the high school level? Well, actually, that, that's, that's a question I had. Does that, does this only include hard copy old school or does it include the online parts too? Yeah, we are moving to a lot of digital, but digital actually is not, uh, it's, it's a little bit, um, a little bit less, but it actually, the fees are not that much. The biggest, the biggest one we will have will be if we are getting new math adoption K-5. And the thing is, if you, put, if you put a textbook adoption off, the following year it's time for the next content area. So, you know, we're on a cycle where every year you're hitting different content, con, uh, content areas. So if you put it off, we're going to have to come back and do something. And we are doing a lot more online, but it has not eradicated the cost totally. And it's kind of even goes back to what we were talking about copying. I know we've been running and tracking our copying numbers over the last really two years. And what, at MEH and GM, they, they have cut reduction I mean, almost 50 percent just because they're using Google Docs and not printing as much and doing things like that. But Textbooks is a tough one, and I think um, in high school, middle school, they really need their math books. And K-5, we probably just have to test the water, but we heard a lot this year from staff that they didn't like Think Math. And, um, and we've had Think Math for, I think our first year was 2012. And they're changing what they're doing in math where they're looking at, which we've asked them to do that accelerated curriculum. So we're going to have to have some materials because if you're a fourth grade teacher and you need fifth or sixth grade materials, 
we're going to need some money to provide those for them. So again, that, that number wouldn't co cover probably the whole, well, it would not cover the whole adoption K-12 for math. We would have to buy a bulk of it in FY17, and then July 1, we would buy some of the remainder out of FY18. Math is a really expensive adoption year. But if you put it off, it does kind of accumulate. I think, uh, quick question. Does this include um, iStation? No, this is like this is actual textbooks, like your okay. content. Where does uh, that just? This is just a. Where does does that show up? And where does iStation show up? At least is iStation in system wide, or is it on the site level software? No, it's system wide. Yeah. Yeah, for both schools. Yeah. Yeah. If we could, if we could, I don't know if that's on here. If we could, if we could add that to the list, because that's something that I've heard from various people at Mount Daniel that they're questioning the efficacy of that program and if so I'd like to hear more from them and what they think about it again that's not a decision I feel comfortable making same thing with like K through five math I'd like to let them weigh in on that one because out of my expertise before I I can move over yes I will move I'll be friends with you um, before I station um, Mount Daniel had Waterford so I know I, well having a conversation with Ms. Haleko a couple of weeks ago that if not I station, they will want something else. Now what that something else would be, we don't really know, but I know she was working with her IT person to look at some other things. So I'm not sure that the total costs would go away, but I think they would want something and shake your head back there if I'm on the right track or not. All right, so, so we'll get iStation numbers broken out separately so that people know what they are. We also need to think about the budget. Yeah, and I would ask that we not start getting into the weeds of eradicating programs that are used for children uh, without a full programmatic look. And this was purchased initially mainly for our ESOL students, and we have seen great results for our ESOL students. So while general education may decide that that's not what they want, and again, it was, I mean, they're the ones that vetted it, and especially Mount Daniel, if it's, if we're finding that it's not the computer adaptive program they want as a whole school, it's a different conversation, but just eradicating something based off, you know, some conversations is not a good way for us to approach this budget. Okay, so for right now, we'll keep the 25,000 reduction in textbooks, right? Okay. Right. Um, 6,000 reduction in computer software and supplies system-wide. Can, can, can that, why, why are there two lines? One says system-wide, one says school buildings. What's the difference? Yeah, I actually, we actually went back through again, trying to look for, uh, where we could cut things out. What you see in the school sites um, are things like uh, Pear Deck, which is uh, all the t a lot of our teachers in, in uh, middle school and high school especially use Pear Deck to push out questions and answers to kids. It's an online program. We have things like Sunburst uh, ProQuest, which is high school uh, software, IXL, which is a computer adaptive program. We have our Gale, EBSCO host, which are again uh, media center items. Eb we have uh, Turnitin.com which is the software to make sure that um, students are not plagiarizing. We have Pitsco, which has to do with our robotics. So ProQuest, which is, again, a media software. Um, but again, we have pulled all of these to see in and, and, and our school sites go in and look at these every year to make sure there's no waste. So that's what's in the school site one. Um, when you ask, I think you were asking about what's the difference in system-wide. Uh, when you get into system-wide, we're looking at things like Schoology, which we use, you know, pretty much across the school division now. Originally, it was going to be just a secondary program. Um, we look at some programs that they use, um, like the business system. Um, discovery education is in here. And then there's I some smaller items where we purchase things from, like, CDW computers and software and supplies. This could be uh, a new keyboard. It could be, you know, mice uh, for the computers, uh, those sorts of things that, that teachers and also all of our different departments need. So, yeah, InfoSnap, our registration system is in there. So did you say Powell School is in there? Um, let me see. Uh, do you remember which one? 
There's a separate yeah. line. I think he gave you a separate line for that so you'd know what it was. Yeah, InfoSnap is, but. And are these registrations or sort of uh, annual dues or? Most software now, in the old days, you used to buy it outright and then it kind of just aged and they'd charge you megabucks to upgrade it seven years later uh, and you were using you old stuff. Have you have subscriptions. Almost subscriptions, every educational word. company has gone okay. to subscriptions. So, so all, all these are subscriptions. When you say computer software, it's to do with subscription. Yeah, there's subscriptions and our teachers and staff actually go through those on an annual basis and okay. make sure that what we're using, we're actually, what we have, what we're paying for, we're actually using. All right, so any problem with system-wide losing 6,000, school buildings losing four? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I, I, when I did my own set of cuts, I just took the $10,000 reduction across the school and the software. It seems reasonable to me, I, and I don't have the information to really go in and say this is necessary or not necessary. I would just, a lot of this is actually going down in cost over time, so it's worth looking to see if there's any more once the school's out of that. Well, and also when we make the reductions, if what we want to do is say computer software and supplies is reduced 10,000, you figure out where you want to take it from, we can do that too. I mean, we don't need to get down to you can only take six from one place and four from another. Um, all right, office supplies down 10.8. Remember, this one does not include software. So this is the one that I... That I integrated across all of the different things and included things that we couldn't cut, got more closer to 147,000. I just think we're going to have to cut office supplies more. And it's a different way of working, and it's hard for people to get used to, but we've just got to use less paper. You know, things have got to be done electronically. And I know that's a hard thing to do in school systems, and, but there's, it's expensive to do paper, it gets lost. We're going to have the technology around. We got to use it. So I, I try to get you know on average across the board not a higher percentage of office supplies, something more like twenty five percent. Well, Mr. what's the next number on the fifty five? Was that spike or was that just a? I mean, oh, was that central office? Central office is a separate one. Yeah, uh, actually, the the office supplies that that is uh, system wide. Yeah. Oh. So I have. I have oh, sorry. Bob. Yes. All the software that's on page seven down at the bottom. It was just the, let me okay. just so I can pull it up. As I explained earlier, um, what. You're going to be saying that a lot. Please. Okay. <laughs> um, what Mr. Reidinger looked at, uh, he looked at the um, object code 6001, which is office supplies, across the three funds the operating budget, the community service fund, and the food service fund. We believe that's what happened. What you see here is a. Is a cleaned up number which looks only at the school operating budget and then removes those large software programs which have been budgeted under office supplies for lack of a better object code in those cost centers. Okay, so, Phil, what you're talking about is the, the total is 55.2. You're just looking for a bigger cut than 10.8. Yes. Okay. So you were and it's an arbitrary desire for more money. Right. Should we peg? Necessary. Should we peg that right now at fifteen thousand, and then revisit? For office supplies. For office supplies. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. It's really important that we know what's in it because, again, in office supplies, you know, we have some of our software and in, in those, we have some software and things of that nature. And if you look at that, it kind of gives you a good example on page seven because those are office supplies, yeah, and when. Okay. Correct. It does not. Okay. Twenty months. So going to fifteen wouldn't be as tough because we wouldn't have to specify programs. This is really paper, pens, pencils, that kind of thing, right? Yeah, notebooks. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Color so, copies, things like that. Okay. So maybe we can start copying in black and white. So could we, we agree? It, it, well, actually, hold up. Uh, stop giving, you should stop giving us paper. I don't, you know, I got, don't disagree with you. I don't. Bring them, we'll, you know, if we don't have the computers, no. we will. 
Yeah. Okay. First, Aaron, then okay. Lawrence. So yes, I agree with that. I, you know, I'm a big paper-based person. I'm, I take handwritten notes, but I've also got a computer and I'm happy to do it all online um, if it saves us money. Um, I'm looking at the school operating fund, accounts or school operating fund where I see under office supplies, it goes from 12,000 to 15,000 from 2016 to 2017. Page. So I just wonder, uh, page 30 of the big, of the big guy. The line, the, it's a li the line item, it's, um, uh, under school operating fund, there's office supplies. It goes from 12 to 15. I was just wondering what the $3,000 increase in office supplies was there. Sorry, what's the number again? Oh. Uh, school operating fund, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that, that actually is, um, and actually that's, that is one of the, the recommended re reductions in terms of um, office supplies because uh, we had piloted uh, a managed print service program which did not work out to, to our benefit and um, at this point you know ha had built in the additional cost for that we can take that out now okay okay yeah. and I think it's it, it's here somewhere it's a suggested reduction okay so taking this one page five office supplies down 15 everyone agrees with Okay. Um, next one, library books and materials down 10. Anyone agree? Is that also arbitrary or? It's just a cut across the board for all of our different libraries. They don't have a lot. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to like it since none of us will, but okay. Um, All right, so going down to uniforms, reduced by five. And, and remind me again, Tony, this is? Um, um, these are custodial uniforms that were just changing kind of the model where going more to a t-shirt model instead of what they've had and which they've had contracted. And uh, Mr. Padilla feels like the custodians will actually be quite happy um, to switch models and, and actually like it. but moving away from part of that contract um, for their uniforms. We do want our custodial maintenance to always be in uniform so that people know it's not a stranger in a building, um, you know, that they're identified that they're staffed, so, and we provide, we have to provide those. So with the 5,000 reduction in t-shirts? Yes, yes. Uh, he has already ran the numbers, looked at the contract, um, is ready to make that reduction. Yeah. Um, I just had a question. What, TransFinder transportation software? Yeah, that is actually the software where you plug in all of the bus routes, and it helps you generate the bus routes, generate the stops, um, which kids ride which buses. Uh, do you have anything else to add? Uh, and um, ultimately working towards um, getting like a map out for, you know, for the community and, and that we can you know, change the bus stops and provide better information to you know, parents and families. Yeah, for years we've done that by hand. Um, and it's getting more difficult as we add more buses and more routes and haven't added staff. Okay, I don't know, it's maybe something to, if we can find a, a less, 14,000 seems a lot to coordinate buses for a 2,500 person school district. And I'm not saying it's not, it would, it's not great, um, but maybe something we could consider okay. finding a different, a less expensive way to organize our buses. Okay. Um, page six. I think everybody agrees on the, the lease. 40,000 decrease by leasing instead of buying buses, right? Okay. And on the security cameras, Phil obviously doesn't want this cut at all. Well, okay, I'm going to stop saying that. None of us want this cut at all. Um, anybody else feel it should be in or out? I'm with Phil. I'm with Phil. When I saw that, um, when I saw that in the first budget, it concerned me, and I unfortunately didn't bring it up then. I'm glad Phil brought it up tonight. But I, I would like to know, though, before I, I you know, I, I, I'm up, um, argue taking putting that back in. I just want to know, like, how effective these cameras, you know. Um, if, the efficacy of the cameras, is it worth the 12000 or the extra $10,000 we're not going to spend? So, um, and I'm so tired right now. I know I'm not making sense. I'm talking in circles. But 
um, <laughs> if you, if we could find out, like, is it really, are they, are they going to be that much more effective? We're just going to have more locations. Are they going to be better cameras? Yeah, and before we made this reduction, of course, we asked SEVI. Uh, this is something that we go in and we do every year. We try to look at what cameras need upgraded. Do we have dead zones? And even at the TJ incident that we had, it just so happened we were upgrading the cameras. That And literally two days later, like that following Monday, Tuesday, we had the cameras that now could go across the whole playground. So we do upgrade cameras. And then you'll have cameras that go out, so it's replacement. But we're in a pretty good place right now, and that's why he felt like that was an okay area. But, again... Um, you know, we don't ever like to cut anything out of security. It's just, I was just everybody looking at their departments and seeing what they could do to so, contribute. So in this case, could we compromise Phil and give them half? <laughs> I, I, or do we want to, oh, I mean. We don't know what camera we want to go out. So, I mean, that's. But, but you're saying Sevi, Sevi recommended, Sevi advised on this one. Yes. Um, I think in Mr. Reiden, I would ask the school board again, is this something that will come back in FY18 or FY19? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we just want to get to a sustainable level of funding. So if we think we've gotten to a point where we're going to need, you know, it's a five year replacement cycle and it's a total of $50,000, we've got a budget for $10,000 a year. But I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do one year fiscal trips. I want to get to right. a sustainable level. That's bad news. Okay. Well, do we want to? have SEVI come back to us and explain how much of it is more security in places where we don't have it now as opposed to simply better cameras where we already have security? Would that make a difference? It, it would to me. I, it's, it, it's both the replacement cycle and it's making sure we've got adequate coverage because you know, I, 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 don't, I, I think this is a place where people in the community will expect us to spend what we need to spend. Right. Uh, so I, I, I would, I, I'm happy to defer to SEVI Okay, so right now, pending further information, that one's out. Oh, can I ask one quick question on that page? Sure. Um, furniture and equipment replacements. Um, on page 29 of the line item budget, there is a $2,000 um, new charge in 2017 for capital replacements. Which page? Page 29 of the line item budget. Okay, hold it um, up. It's hold near it up the no, point. That's, that's, that's okay, it's near the this bottom. Good point. That's good. Near the yeah. bottom. There we go. Capital replacements, 2000. It says a 0%, which I, it's probably just a typo. From 0 to 2000. Okay, and, and I'll tell you what, what, what that is. And again, it, it's, it's the, the change from the amended budget. So, so um, my sense is that at some point, the original budget had $2,000 in there that may have gotten moved for, for some other more important purpose. Okay. And this, this would be, uh, frankly, for, for small equipment replacement in the central office, whether it's a fax machine or, 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 you know, or, or some, something like that. Michael, you had that look. No? No. Okay. So, honestly, for those four pages, we did pretty well. We added to most or to some, and we only took one out. So, going back to page three, anything new on that page that people would like to raise? We've already raised photocopier leases. Um, no, we, well, we haven't resolved them. <laughs> well, no. No. I said raised. The question is, do we... Is there a consensus that we want to try to decrease it by a certain number, or do we need more information to figure out what's realistic? Because what we don't want to do is have a number where it comes down to, okay, that's 1.37 copiers, and that doesn't really help anybody. I'd like to, I'm, to Margaret's point, I think we need more information there. I mean, I, I think we should reduce paper, but I don't want to burden our teachers with. Right. Well, and then. But I, I really am about reducing paper, but it's not going to happen overnight. People need to get used to the idea. They need to find creative ways to get rid of paper and creative ways to use their, their laptops. Um, so, I mean, that is going to be a gradual thing. In my mind, it would take me. You know, I couldn't do it overnight, and I think most people, well, many people are like this as well. So, I mean, I like the idea of reducing paper, and I like the idea of looking at these items and saying, oh, it involves paper, let's get rid of it. But I think that's something we should shoot for in over, over years. Okay, we could. 
Yeah, and that's the other thing. This is this is the leases for the machines. We also have to find out, you know, are we on a track where it would cost us more to get out of it than it would be to just go through the lease and let them, you know, say after t two years leases end and then we don't. Well, and then it. No. Right, and, and which building, I think, is a level of detail we wouldn't want to get into, but just if you can just get us more information about what the leases are. Okay. I like Well, the copiers, well, the copiers they have, the only thing I can say is the copiers they have are driven by what they've asked for. And at MEH, for a long time, they were running up and down the stairs, and we were able to, was it last year, Hunter, or a year Two before? Years. Yeah, give them an additional copier because it was hard. I mean, when you're in a multi-level building, it's not easy. And then if you send something to the printer and then you run down there in the printer jam, then you get to run back up to your classroom again, hit print again, run back down there. And so, I mean, there's, it's just, it's a tough, it's a tough issue. And I will say this doesn't help us tonight, but just uh, two years ago when we did, you know, l look at in three of the buildings where the photocopier leases were coming up, we were actually able to add um, a photocopier at the middle school at no additional expense by changing the terms of the lease and the, and the equipment costs and things like that. So, I mean, we, we do look, look at these things. I get, get all of that. I'd, I'd still try to cut photocopier expenses by about 20%. I mean, it's just, it's the trend, at least in offices. I know schools have to move a little bit more slowly in a lot of ways, but you know, anybody who's been in an office environment knows that photocopiers have gradually decreased. And so you'll have large offices with one or two photocopiers in them now because people expect to work electronically. And, uh, you know, if, if we're going to have, it's it's harder, I think, particularly at the elementary level. But if, if our if our kids are going to have laptops, then we may have to accelerate the transition time. Excel, get it done by the end of the week, and you get your package. You get another sheet. He, he would say, "I'll accept it electronically." Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get more information on that. Back on page three. Well, first of all, remind me again for instructional staff development services. Were we okay with sixteen one? Yeah, I didn't make any notes that people but Phil had. was wanting to zero it out if possible. Well, I, I said let's, if possible. Well, that, that's well, in a last in, first yeah. out. Well, uh, zero, zero out decreasing it, not zero out. Right. Right, okay, so. No, 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 no. So, right. <laughs> Other way. All right, so for right now, we'll, Phil, if it's okay, we'll leave it in okay. with a note that you wanted to come out. Well, I mean, I, I think we ought to start to, you know, put these cuts into some sort of prioritized list. So that, right. You know, Once we, we go through, it's it's sifting. You you get the biggest things out first, and then you sift down. He's yes. But we have a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's still 174, 800. That's it. That's so it's still small. So any anything. Plus 170 is the teaching stuff. Uh. Well, the 174 is just from these four pages. Right, what, what the board has discussed thus right. far. Right, so then seem to agree on top that. of it would be the 110, well, the 110 and the 10 from the Education Foundation. Okay. So, so, two, so, we're close to th so we're close to three. Um, okay, so I got, I got one question on under legal legislative and project management services. I know we have, we paid 3,000 for Alila Weiss and I am thankful for her service, but can we, be paying three thousand dollars for legislative services in Richmond if she's she's already advocating on behalf of Fairfax and Arlington around us. Again, is that something that we're getting that? that I mean, and Lawrence probably can speak to this better than I can, and John because you guys and Margaret, you've all been doing this longer than I have. So I'm just questioning the efficacy of paying for that if we're kind of getting the benefits and we're so. I don't know, so you. Well, I would just say we wouldn't general. have gotten. I don't think the red light camera victory if we didn't have her. So I know it comes down, it's a bit like NSBA. So what it really is, every year do we think our specific legislative ask is going to be what everybody else's is? And if it's not, do we care enough about that issue to want to pay for it? Mm. So at this point, I would be inclined just having worked with her and seen what she can do. Um, I would rather keep that. I don't know, Lawrence, Margaret, you want to? And the only reason I would say I, I understand your ask, but my only concern would be that um, if we ever do have a 
specific something that we want to go down to Richmond with, that is better to have someone who has a relationship down there already with legislators from parts of the state that we would not, that we probably, it, it's more helpful that way. But I, I, I so is she on is she on retainer then? Like, could we? I mean, to John's point, could we work with her to on a as needed basis, or does she only does she have to be on retainer? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. And, I think it's a Lilla question. And, <laughs> and yeah, you might, this might, ha you might have had this answered, but um, so Lilla is sort of like our insurance policy. It's like you're having an attorney on retainer or something, but I mean, she really does, she, she keeps us abreast. She's down there. You know, none of us really have time to be, know, you know, to know what's going on in Richmond, all the subtle things that start happening before they they come into the public view. She's really on top of that stuff. So for it's a small amount of money, I think, considering what the services she provides us. Yeah, I think, and I hadn't thought of that to a certain extent. She's also not just doing what we ask her to do, but she's the, the canary in the coal mine to let us know if something bad is happening when, you know, you get things about uh, mandating that, you know, homeschooled kids can, can do X with public schools or things like that. So. Yeah, if we could, I, I would not want to put that on the block, but that's me. So unless, okay. Um, all right, so anything else people want to raise on page three? Not that we yes. can't come back, but. One question, and I'm, I'm cognizant of the fact that, you know, I, I've been on the receiving end of, you know, congressional directives to, you know, cut something by 10%. You know, where there's no way to cut it. So, and they're enjoyable, aren't they? Um, yeah, I'm thinking about things like electrical service and water sewer. Yeah, they're un they're in a sense uncontrollable, but they're also in a sense controllable. And I don't know if there's you know if we do the solar power thing, is that going to help? Can we can we do any projections that some of these things might go down if we did things differently next year? And I don't you know it's it's just a you know. It, I know since electrical service is five hundred and ninety thousand dollars, that's a you know a ten percent cut there is real money. It's half a teacher, so I just don't. Yeah, I mean one of the challenges we have is our buildings are used um, in the evenings, and we don't have a lot of control over it. And we do staff it where there's one person there, but we use a lot of electricity because of community use. Um, I will say, we, we set through the solar presentation. I, I don't expect that to be too optimistic until we figure out that campus, mm -hmm. um, simply because they're not really willing to make an investment if there's any concern whatsoever that you could have any changes to the roof. So, um, but, uh, I would say Sevy actually does a really good job of trying to be conservative and automating lights when he can. And, um, but I would be a little worried about just having an arbitrary cut there. A lot of it is GM and, and MEH. And we do look into this periodically. I mean, the idea of setbacks is not is not a new one in terms of, you know, and, and normally one would think, well, in the summertime, maybe you could, well, our buildings are, are, are really used almost, yeah, year round and almost 24-7. Um, uh, we do we do continue to look at it. Um, we do belong to VEPCA. That's one of our dues and memberships. That's a Virginia energy provider, government something or other. Um, but we we get favorable electrical rates by a, by a seven hundred and fifty dollar a year membership. We 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 get to tap in and, and get the get their favorable rates. Um, but it's always it's always utilities are always worth a, worth a look. Well, I guess the the, the bigger question is Phil. Are you thinking we should close all the buildings at 6:30 and not have community use, not have outside people? No, I'm not. I, I certainly wouldn't suggest that. Okay. Um, but you know, if I think it's worth the the people who work in the area's thought, like you know, if we could save five percent by closing at 10 as opposed to 11, you know, I think that's something. If it's if we're talking about fifty thousand dollars. That we might consider saying, well, you got to be out of there by ten. And to be, be to be perfectly honest, where we will see the biggest savings in this category is when and if we get a new high school. The, the one we have leaks like a sieve. God bless it, but you know it's old and it's old. Okay, Hope's not a strategy. So let's. <laughs> <laughs> so to that point, uh, I imagine a big component of that is like heating and cooling the buildings. Um, I feel like the. Sometimes, like in the summer, it might be uncomfortably cold because we're blasting the AC. Do we have like a way to raise 
I know it's centralized heating and cooling, but do, if we were to increase it by a few degrees, I imagine it would save a lot of money. So, you know, and if it's too cold inside the building when it's hot outside, it seems like kind of a waste. Yeah, Mason is our tough building, which I know you know because you live in it. So you can set the temperature in part of the building it works and part of the building it doesn't. Um, and SEBI does regulate temperature as much as he can in all of our buildings. And in the newer buildings, it's obviously much easier. It's kind of like our central office where it is controlled. But I, I guess what I'd like is to go back to SEBI and maybe you know, have him talk to some people or some experts in the community if he can, if, he, if there's something he needs to look at. And just is, is there any way to squeeze out you know, three percent or something like that, because even you know, the small per, where we're talking five thousand dollars elsewhere, you know, five thousand dollars that we can save on energy and put into teacher professional development is a, a bargain I'd love to make. Lawrence, uh, just to go to a different uh, line item to see if there is any potential of reduction. Sorry, still uh, page three. We are still on page three, and it is field and grounds maintenance. Th those services there is there a way that we can reduce those from the current 124,000 well actually this this is an item that was not budgeted uh, for FY 16 the current year we're in right now uh, it was formerly handled by the, by the city through their through one of their departments um, and I don't know whether it was Parks and Rec or which department, but we were informed early in the summer that they would no longer be doing our mowing or our tree trimming, and that we would have to have to basically eat that cost and make arrangements for ourselves this year. So this is a new cost to the school board because the city kind of surprised us at the beginning of this year and told us they were no longer going to provide that service to us. Okay, so before they weren't providing the service and we were paying a fee, they were just providing the service as out of the goodness of their hearts. Well, actually, because, and this is one of the, I don't know whether it's a benefit or a curse of having worked here for so long, but uh, back in 1995, uh, we, the schools did used to contract separately for this, and this was a consolidation effort. And in, interestingly enough, the amount that we, and I remember it in my head, the amount that we transferred over to, from our budget to the city was $35,000. And so th basically the school board passed that money over to the city back in the mid 90s and the city passed it back to the school board with, with didn't pa pass the the work back to the school board without without providing the money. Okay, so this is a new cost that we're going to have every year going forward. Yes. Is there a way that we can, though, reduce that overall cost, though, to opposed to spending that much in the way of, I, I get the, the potential fields part of it, that we do have to spend that, but the, the, the cutting grass, tree trimming, is there a way to generally reduce that, do that overall cost? Well, and at Sevi. I'll tell you. I mean, you may either, well, you, you reduce it, it and, and it's, it's yeah. oh my goodness. And we have, and Sevi and I have had this discussion as we've gone through his budget because we struggle so much on the maintenance side for him to have enough money to fix what he needs to fix. So how can you go out and not plant so many flowers and bushes and all of that sort of thing? And he's looking right now at trying to get a beautification committee, which I really think our, we could get community support for, where we would have more buy-in for people at each building to be able to take care of flower beds and that sort of thing and get it back to just basic mowing and stop worrying so much about the pretty aspect and have it more volunteer. Outdoor classroom? Pardon? It could be a great outdoor classroom project for the kids. Yeah, it's, as long as they get this plans and stuff donated because it still comes out of the other budget if it's the other um, way. So on that, I just, I guess I have a question that, you know, parks, I know Parks and Rec uses our facilities quite a bit, so they're not kicking in for that at all now? They are. They are. Okay. I just want to make sure. They are. But that's a fee. That's a separate. Not for this. Correct. It's a separate fee. So it doesn't cover, because it, I don't know, I'm just thinking logically, if, if someone's using our fields a lot of the time, maybe they could, I don't know, Parks and Rec probably doesn't have that much either. I'm not trying to pick on them, but it does seem that if they're using our fields a lot and that requires more maintenance and mowing and other things that maybe we could work with them, I don't know that they're going to be willing to, but work with them on this this cost and the oh. part that with that also I know 
that even on that side they've reduced their their stuff. So I'm so I'm just kind of looking at it overall of if that's that 124 just seems a big number to to be spending within that that particular area. So if there's a way that we can reduce that number, or if of going back to the to the city to see if that's something that they would potentially go back to picking up the cost for. I mean, that's that's something that we need to cost, or you know at. cost sharing. I, I, you know, it's, it's something a point for a negotiation and discussion. Um, yeah, I would I would just you know remind everybody just to, up at the high school we've got 35 acres. So, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but unfortunately, we also have a lot of a lot of land. But no, oh, based on my home cost, this is seems this seems in line. Right. So, should we? I'm not sure how to categorize that one, Lawrence. Should we just put a question mark because well, more, more information? I go back and just just. I would at least question mark it because sure. I think it is something that needs to get get looked at a little closer because I think that's a fairly big line line item to to add in. Okay. What about rent expenses? How is the rent actually for central office? Yeah. Okay. Well, isn't that okay? Yeah. I don't think it's on page three. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. So. Lease rent. I, I believe it's it's um, up in twenty or twenty twenty one some somewhere. I'll have to go back and check check the document. Um, it was it was um, tweaked when we um, had added the space for the for the um, student services and the special ed office. Um, but I, I can go back. No. No, no, it's just that one floor. No, down at the, the corner. We are the whole floor now. We are the whole floor. It wasn't a debt. Well, it, yeah, you know, the, there it 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 was it was both. It was an it wasn't a it was an addendum um, that it did extend at least, but maybe like a year or two. Um, there is an appropriation clause actually in in all ag agreements with public bodies. Um, which is sort of like the last, you know, resort, um, which basically says, you know, we we don't have the money to pay it, and therefore we're we're backing out of this thing. Yeah, what it, what it says is <laughs> we're, we're paying the rent subject to getting the appropriation of us. I don't know if we work here since obviously we would have the money choosing. Look into, but well, just maybe I don't know. Do we keep our eyes open for something less expensive? Or, I don't yeah. Know. Well, I mean that's that's what it comes down to is how much how much would you save versus how much would it cost to make the change? I, I mean, ideally it would be we would leave this and move into the top floor of a new high school if you can get it. Right. So. Okay. All right. More on page three. All right. Page four. Anything in can addition I, to? Can I say, when these amounts get into the low double digits or heck high, low five digit and yeah, high these pages four are digits, all high to low. Like. I Is know. it even worth chasing? Well, that's the question. I mean, I've got. That's the problem with just the big. Yeah, I mean, I've what got. What is the big issue? And that is exactly. where, I mean, the little things we can go in and add up, and we've done that, and we can add little bits, but how do you get to 112,000? And that's, that's the question. Right, and so it's more, does, does anybody have anything they would like to raise? I mean, I would ask on page five, down near the bottom, the, the meltwater license. I mean, that's a news monitoring software yeah and i think we actually have plans to stop that now should we not i believe yeah. i believe so that yeah that i think i think we should because i mean I'm, I'm familiar with it and it's really good but i think for us it's it's overkill so i'd suggest it uh, closer to the top 
holding the athletic supply slab from okay. the 40 case. I'll, can we agree meltwater? Sure. Okay. What is meltwater? Oh, that's the, okay. So are we cutting that? Yes. Okay, sorry, Phil, go ahead. Uh, athletic supplies boosted, it's up to 52 this year from 40. I, you know, in this environment, because they're just holding it flat at 40. Yeah, what, what information is in there? Well, uh, and, and actually, you, that would be a possibility. The thing you have to be, be careful of here is that because we do collect fees from students for, for pay to play, that right now what, what, we, what we've done is um, programmed a great portion of those fees into this line item. Now, could those fees be used to cover EPEDs? Could they be used to cover, you know, and part of the proposal on the revenue side is, you know, bus, buses for, for team travel, things like that. Yes, it, 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 it might be a little bit of a shifting, but, it, but it's possible. I'm just not sure what the parameters are off the top of my head. Yeah, but I, I mean, that doesn't strike me as realistic. I could be wrong. Okay. But I, I, it feels to me like we are not treating sports as a money-making proposition. We might from ticket sales and things like that. Okay. But I, 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 I suspect that we're subsidizing anyway and that the fees, even with increased fees, they don't cover all of the equipment and other costs associated. And and they do not. You are you are correct. You know, especially I think the you know the stipends, the EPD, you know, coaching stipends. The, I'm not things. talking about cutting anything. I'm just saying We're old just athletic supplies flat, flat. at 40k. So we're, how do we account for that other 15 that we are raising from fans? That 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 could go either towards um, either the travel, but but if we increase the fees, then we can't do that. Or it could go to op, or it could go to offset the cost of the EPDs, which is about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, I, 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 I don't know. This whole this whole concept of, I mean, the very concept of charging these students to represent the school it bothers me. Well, it, it, considering when none of the other groups are asked to pay a fee, it's only ask the athletes, as far as I know, right? Yeah. Well, no, there are there others. Band? I mean, uh, TSA, uh, robotics and band. I, they they raise. Yeah, but I mean. Nobody pays, nobody's parents actually pay for those kids to participate. And I really always had an issue with this pay to play. Um, I understand the logic behind it and a lot of schools are going that way, but it seems to really uh, unjustly burden the kids who choose to play sports instead of the men's sport. to do music by their own instruments. Uh, so it's harder to do that for Well, not no, not always. No, usually they have their own instruments at home and they bring them into school. In some cases they don't. Like the tuba. It depends, yeah, it depends on the instrument. You can have tubas at home. I'm just saying, if you price the tuba. Pardon? If you price the tuba. I was a tuba player. I couldn't afford a tuba. So Broke my heart. Quite the people rent them. Okay. <laughs> all, all I'm saying is it's not just cut and dry yeah. that you would expect that many kids to pay. Okay, so <laughs> what do you, so Phil, are you asking to take that down to 40? Yes. Okay. Okay, is there any support? Well, it. On the line for athletic supplies, it's 52,000. It went up from 40,000 last year. And I just don't think we've got 12,000 this year. I'd, make, I'd hold it at 40. Can I ask why went to 52? Are there more teams? Microphone. More oh, my, my yeah. microphone. Yeah. I was saying, yeah. can I ask why there was the, 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 it went up twelve thousand? Well, that's a big jump from the forty. My, my understanding. What drives it? Yeah. Uh, my understanding is, I, and I got that number from Mr. Horn. And what what it is is it is more more student participation. I think there are increased num numbers of teams, and it reflects uh, what in, in terms of actually being collected. 
so it's it's um, it was a projection for next year uh, based on uh, sound data. So this is what is being collected from the student. Yes. So in, to that end, that do are we even able to cut it? The the question the well the question the question is what what do, what do the monies collected from the students go to support, and legally because it's it's coming from the students or the students' families to pay for athletic activities it should cover some expenses related to those athletic activities. Makes sense. So and far. in terms of the expenses related to the athletic activities. There is equipment, uh, purchases and refurbishment, you know, repaired, make, make sure that's, that's all okay. There is, um, there's contracted travel that, that's needed if, if teams go into tournaments or, you know, get into finals, those sorts of things. And there are also the um, extra pay for extra duty stipends for the coaches. Um, do the kids pay for the uniforms? That I do not know. <laughs> yes, go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, parents have to pay to get into these places. Nope. <laughs> and pay to eat. Uh, so the question was, um, the we do collect about fifty-two thousand dollars in fees, and when when the fee was first implemented, um, the fees were set based on first season, second season, third season, family maxes, uh, in order to approximate what was initially in that equipment and supplies category only. Um, and I think historically that number ranged from anywhere between 35 and 60,000, depending on what the cycle was. If we were replacing a certain number of uniforms in a given year, we, we asked for more. If we weren't replacing those uniforms, we asked for less. 40,000 was the initial number, but in, in the time from the time we implemented fees first to now, we have added field hockey, which has added about 48 players, 48 student athletes to the program. Um, and we didn't see any of the attrition that we thought we might see by implementing fees. Uh, so the number we actually collect annually is about 52,000. So how it's accounted for is a decision that you all will make, but the revenue will be 52,000 whether you leave that line at 40 or not um, at the current fee rate. And of course there was a discussion earlier about increasing the fee, um, which would add another ten or eleven thousand dollars based on current numbers to that so to Mr. Ankuma's question directly do kids pay for their uniforms they don't individually pay for their uniforms um, but the school buys and owns uniforms that we distribute to athletes and we buy them with the money that we collect from fees partially I mean as a as a rough guess fees cover if we spent every dollar that we collected from fees fifty two thousand uh, it would cover about 50% of the equipment and supplies that we purchase annually. So when a, when a kid gets a uniform and put their name on the back, they get to keep that, right? Well, we don't have any uniforms with names on the back, but when kids have, oh. we, we, do, we do sell a lot of spirit wear. Yeah, you can, you can buy a jacket yeah. and have your name. We offer a lot of opportunities for kids to buy more things that they will own. Right? Okay, okay, so when they're playing on the field, they've got their number on the back, but it's not. That's right. But do they ever hand them back? Yes. They do? Every year. Every season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in fact, they, they're not. A, yeah, I was going to say, if you have them in your closet, we take them back. Um. <laughs> okay, so the bottom line is we will be collecting 52. Under the current fee structure, we'll be collecting 52. Right. And if so, we raise, the, change the fee structure, we'll collect more. Right, but so if we decide to reduce what we spend to 40, then that 12 would be able to be spent somewhere else. There wouldn't, would there be restrictions because it's coming from athletics and needs to go to athletics? Well, I mean, I, it, we have always promoted to the community that the dollars raised from athletic fees were a direct offset to the yes. cost yes. as a result of the 2010 or 11 budget that reduced that number to zero. So um, Ideally, I think the community would expect that the 52,000 will all go to offset costs attributed to participation in sports. Which, which and there are lots of categories there. Right. I mean, you know, the professional services of officials is close to 50,000. Um, the commercial transportation is a $14,000 number. Um, the, so we could use it to offset athletic officials 
I, I'm going to have to defer to Mr. Kimball because I don't know how the accounting works of the 52,000 and whether it actually saves you anything by changing the 40 and reducing that. I, I, I'll have to defer on whether it actually changes the red number on it, the bottom. It, it, it right. would change the number. What I was going to point out is, and, and actually Mr. Horn and I dealt with an issue this week about, about this very, very thing in a, in a different venue. It, this is not unlike the fees, uh, the, the monies that school receive from school photographs, things like that, that if the school receives that, it must be used to, for the benefit of all the students in that school. You just can't, you know, get, you know, give it, you know, you know, give it to benefit fit a, a, a small a number or a select number. Um, and, you know, by the same logic, I mean, if you're saying you're collecting fees to support athletics, that in some way, shape, or form, that those fees should be directed to the athletic program to, you know, to support it. Um, so I think the question is, if we leave it at 40, is there another category that we can reduce also? Yeah. That it's going to ultimately be offset by the fifty-two thousand in revenue. I believe the mechanics w would be if we offset it at forty, it would mean that that Mr. Horn and his and his coaches would have forty thousand would be taking in fifty-two thousand dollars would have forty thousand dollars next year as they do this year to spend on athletic supplies. That twelve thousand dollars in additional revenue is coming in that could be used to. Um, you know, offset some other line item like officials or EPDs, and if it, and if that funds those funds go in to support that, then the funds they replace could be used for something else. So it's kind of a little bit of a of a shuffle shell game. But. So if that works, I think my suggestion would be to leave it at forty and take it out of professional services officials, which is the most predictable annual cost that we Very have. Predictable. Yeah. Um, since you're here, I have a quick question. I think that the transportation piece was there with uh, more the athletics piece, I guess. When you all travel to more of the district um, athletic games, of away games, do you all do the regular school buses or do you use other commercial? Like commercial? We would reserve commercial transportation for trips that are particularly long and or re would return particularly late on a school night. Um, traditionally, we're talking about trips south and or east or west of Richmond, south of uh, Stanton, um, south of Charlottesville on a school night would be a school bus or would be a charter bus as opposed to a school bus. Radford. Yeah, and we don't take the, well, not Radford necessarily, but um, those would be school night trips, and we won't, wouldn't do that in the regular season. That would become a postseason only thing. So traditionally, I mean, our commercial buses are reserved for postseason travel, primarily on school nights. Thank you. And that, that's what I was wondering if it was just more the postseason when we typically have to, have to travel the greater distances of southwestern yeah, southwestern Virginia and, and those places. Like, okay. Yeah, we won't voluntarily schedule. Okay. Okay, so take that down to 40 and put that in towards some other category, like Tom said, officials, something that's predictable. Does that make sense, Phil? Sure. Okay. So these five pages, Right, that's why we need to get through these and move on. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying to, but <laughs> yeah, th th thank you, yeah. thank you. Because <laughs> I'm using a I'm using a phone to add. I <laughs> mean, that's not good. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we. Yeah, we need to look. I think we need to look at the big items and plan on. I think for our own sanity, end around eleven, no later, because we're going to have diminishing returns. Now, Tony, Tony, the schedule we had planned was we wanted to vote on the tenth. We probably will not be ready, and so we'll do another work session. I think it'll be 
figuring out when we're going to do it because we're going to have to take what you give us tonight and go work over the next week to run new scenarios for you. Okay. Could we, um, Right. Yeah, and, and on the big items, I would like to see if we can first identify agreement, get that behind us, because there's going to be enough disagreement to go around. Okay. Can we just um, just make sure we add the uh, under the, the on page five of this the transfinder transportation services just as a as an item to investigate. Surely. If we could just cut that by half. Uh, got it. It is. Sorry, which one? Which page? On the capital improvement. Um, which page? Page six. Six. Technology hardware state grant. Yeah, so what is that? So that's an incoming but we get money from the outside. Yeah, and that must be sent on spent on actual like hardware for us to get that funding. It must be spent that way. The the grant, the hardware state grant. Yes, yes, both that and the and the, both that and this and the CTE equipment that's a, that's a state grant we, we it's a reimbursable so we have to spend it in order to receive those funds so 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 time out yeah technology hardware yes for the state grant the yeah state would could that offset the lease payments or it it cannot because the, and I, that's a good question but the thing is the, the state funds are raised through issuing bonds and bonds are not allowed bonded debt is not allowed to use be used for lease payments Wait a second. Are they giving to us as debt, or is it a grant? The state is taking on the debt, but that is how the state is raising the money, and therefore, because because the funds are 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 bonded debt, that the items that the funds are used for have have to be capital items um, and leased items um, could be subject to return, and therefore. Um, funds raised through bonds are not uh, allowed to be used for leases. Makes no sense to me, but that's okay. It's the state. <laughs> so uh, on a related note, slightly different, yes. I got that we had to spend the same thing. Grant funds for that. The loan of funds piece is $48,050. Um, I'm much more different to 5050 is. I know that we've a line item for $35,000. Feels like a relatively easy twenty thousand dollars to say hold that easy at six seventy to six three three as opposed to going up to thirty five thousand. Uh, I assume it's a sixteen three. I, I, I'm just doing a feel for that. But the burn rate was on that. But the actual rate sure. was here. But you know, I, I don't know why we're increasing that to thirty five thousand. And I wonder if anything we got in there could be squeezed with grant courtesy. And I'm not sure exactly, I have to go back and check the mechanics. I suspect that maybe it was a consolidation of some uh, capital addition things elsewhere. Um, uh, it, other other uh, FY16 line items, but I can go back and look at that. I'll, I will, just in terms of a little more information about this, the, the state technology, the, the, the big honk and 154,000, um, really uh, is, is meant to be focused on the classrooms, uh, c connectivity, um, so we, we can buy servers with, we can buy, you know, we, in fact, we do, we've replaced blade servers with it, you know, we've bought wireless access points. Um, it, initially, yay many years ago, it was to make sure that the schools were, were ready for online testing, and we met that with flying colors. But we really we, we focus those into the classrooms and the school buildings. The um, the um, the the non-state money um, is for uh, computer equipment that um, is is really not so much for the classroom as as it, as it would be for like, maybe like principal's offices or or my office or so information. Um, and, and that I will have to, I'll need to go back, but what I suspect is that there were other line items that were perhaps zeroed out between 16 and 17 and, and just moved to consolidate. I tend to do that. 
in, term, in terms of budgeting, so that the, um, the, uh, the total amount of money didn't change, it just moved uh, from line item. I, I, I'd certainly like to see yeah. that on the list as a yeah. possibility that sure. there's more information about sure. why the money changed. Surely. So you'll get yes. more. Yes. All right. Through page six, anybody else have anything else? And again, we can come back, but if we can keep moving on. On pages eight and nine, we've got the dues. We've gone through a couple of the big ones, especially NSBA. Um, I don't see anything else here that we should spend time on since we've got bigger things to talk about. So anybody have something that's really burning in them? No, I just want to make sure that we consider the PY, the duplicate PYP. Yes, that's. Two. I think uh, you, you probably have that. Yeah, I mean the one, the one big question mark in our first one was, for memberships, we're looking at the PYP to take eight thousand off of that by not doing one school, and uh, NSBA in addition okay. to the twenty four hundred. Thanks. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So we, we are talking about not doing PYP. I just for clarification. Well, we're. Because we don't pay the fee, we're not doing it. Can, well, and we understand that it would be, we would not be doing it possibly for one school, not both. I think at this point we should be doing that because well, we, we, that, I think that's an entire another discussion outside of the budget. I mean, we should make, we should make that decision and then yeah. cut it. But I don't think we can cut it and go back. And a actually, when you off. brought this up, Mr. the first thing that, that occurred to me was simply somebody, I don't know, and, and I'll, I'll do it, but it's hard to get a hold of somebody, is just place a, a phone call to IB and say, excuse me, we we have these two schools that if we if this were one school we'd be paying one fee can you cut us some slack and I, I, think it's, I think it's worth I think it's worth a discussion especially in this kind of you know this tough budget year where everything is so difficult oh yeah, yeah. I, I just just so you know we have done that and we did try that and we'll go back and try it again and if you'll notice there are only um, there and so we've got Mount Daniel TJ MEH and and GM however GM's is the international baccalaureate fee we managed to do it for MYP where they allowed us to do two buildings because they were on the same campus but they have not given us any leeway at all with the two elementaries because they have separate addresses they view it just like an elementary because in our district we could choose to have two k5 buildings we choose to have a you know K1 because we still have a lot of students, so we could have two elementaries, but it's by address and location of the property. Thank you. Welcome. By the way, can I ask where we where we we were in the process of the certification? Well, PYP started back in 2000, Lisa, um, 2009, 2010. Went through the first authorization, 2011, is when uh, both of the elementaries went through. We just did it again, kind of recertifying um, this school year. Just went through that process. So they are, you what? Right, just waiting on the report. And so um, they just went through all of that literally a month or so ago. Yeah, in the high school as well. So this will cut the fee that goes to them. And this means you, what this means is we would not, we would not pay the fee and we would lose our rights. And that's, we need to understand that to talk about learner profile, use all the vocabulary. They own that. And so you couldn't not pay your fee and then still say, but we're still going to do it. So we need to understand that they own that. Um, so that if we didn't do the MYP and the PYP, we, could, we would still pay the high school fee and do the diploma program. Well, I think it's whatever the school board decides to do. If you no, don't, I'm yeah, just, yeah. I'm just saying, can we, is it possible to, we've always had the diploma program. Oh, oh we, anyway. we paid I, the international baccalaureate right. for just the IB diploma, you know, that fee component for years okay. uh, before we added PYP or MYP. So that's just the will of the school board. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, but it does come down to, do we want to make a programmatic decision in 10 days so yeah so so this is something where yeah we need to know what staff thinks um especially staff since you know they would be more affected directly than anybody else but uh, this is where we get down to what do we agree on what do we sort of agree on and honestly what are we going to fight over and this might be one of the things we're going to fight over but not tonight okay. yeah that's just Okay. All right, moving on. All right, let's get to page 11. And, and what I'd like to do here, 
let's run through, not quickly, but let's try not to get bogged down and see where we can find agreement and then come back and try to get total agreement the next time. Okay. So um, separate from the MYP question is the GM computer science teacher. I mean, that was the one. Well, see, that's the problem. This is the one where the, the, the high school asked us to well, delete this, is, this. This was the addition, though. So we, this is the actually new position. I think that's where we get caught up in what's truly a cut and a reduction in the existing budget and what is a new position. We have made this GM computer science teacher the new position. What I heard earlier is we're wanting to not have the position at all at the high school, so they're losing computer science, and we're pulling out the MYP coordinator. That's what we said before, if, if that's what you're talking about doing. Let me ask, is this being offered as an elective, as a, what I call a core course? What is it? Well, the computer science is really off the table now anyway, but no, computer science is a full course at our high school. No, 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 no. it is a full course. I'm yeah, I'm sorry. Is it an elective, or is it a core piece of the curriculum? Uh, it is an elective class. Um, computer science is something that for the state of Virginia, all students are going to have to have an experience in, but they're handling it kind of like they are technology and that it can be interwoven through all of your other courses. So I don't anticipate that they're going to put that mandate on us because I know we can't hire the staff to teach it. It's very difficult. Okay, but in effect, this is already done. Well, this is the new position that what's sitting in, in this section of the budget, it's two different issues. This one is actually the new position the school board was putting in that we had in the budget originally. Then you have the position that was already a high school position. The high school had just said, we're going to give up our position. They're two totally different positions. So if, if this one is going to count, this means we're still deducting this one. Now what you're also asking, what you're saying, is you're going to go into the high school and you're going to reduce them a, a 1.0 additional on top of this if you don't give them the MYP coordinator. Is that? Well, yeah, but that, I don't think we're talking about that right now. We're just talking about this one piece. And I, I, don't, I haven't heard anyone object to any of the group A cuts. I just think we ought to take them and go on. Because this is obviously <coughs> where the, the MYP coordinator is still on the table, but let's not mix the two issues. Thank you. Right, this well, is just take the, right. take, the, take the take the tuition right feature. All of this stuff right. seems over right. 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 I guess at some point we can take all the cuts and then also realign them by school and see where the burden falls. Because that's one thing I heard about, you know, mm -hmm. the, the burden falling too uh, hard on Mount Daniel or the whole. But you cannot you cannot do a school budget like that, Mr. Nkuma, because no, 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 no. it's, where the, it, it's where the children are, and we are not adding any teachers at all at MEH or GM, none. And so we have to be very aware of that. If we have student growth next year, we're going to have students at MEH and GM. And, and to stay true to the priorities, that's why those three teachers were targeted elementary. That was our top priority. But that's why you're going to see the reductions there, because that's the new spending. We didn't do new spending at MEH or GM. So I just want people to be aware that we may have some bigger class sizes at MEH and GM that we haven't seen before. And we're already, like I say, starting to hear it as they're looking at their master schedules. But that's why you're, you have more at the elementary because that's what we're, where we've added. Uh, you mean in terms of enrollment? In, in, because of enrollment and in the new transfer request, that increased request, those positions were targeted at elementary. So now if we're talking about this increased request and we don't have the money we thought we were going to have, we haven't added any positions at MEH and GM. So now you're talking about going into what they have right now and FY16 and cutting them. Yes, and, and that's the computer science one. We could do that because it wasn't filled. It's because we, we've had trouble getting somebody to, to fill that position. But beyond that, we don't have the leeway because we haven't given them anything. Right. I, I guess, like Phil said, let's go through the exercise and see where we end up. Yeah. So. Right, so out of these in Group A, only the bus was in the five pages we went through before, right? Correct. Correct. Is that, okay. Yes, because, because right. that's a thing. It's not a right. position or a benefit. Or, yes. Okay. okay. Yes. So, so we just found another 200. Yeah. All right, so Group B, um, obviously last week we agreed to the 110, reducing the, uh, the salary improvement. Does anyone have a problem with um, keeping the step for support staff? 
Okay. Keep that. Step for leadership. We've already asked for more information in terms of what that involves. Do we, do we need? I think we ought to talk about that because you know, I, I like Aaron, would like to see that on the list, not because I don't, you know, it, both in terms of be clear, clear who it covers. And you know, we are, I had proposed, and I wasn't here for the discussion last week, instead of trying to give everybody a step, because it's kind of hard, while you can, while you can sort of salami slice when you're doing recalibration yes. for the teachers, you can say, you know, you get 80% of your raise, right? But if it's a step, it's sort of all or nothing unless you go back and recalibrate the thing. So I was, th I was trying to sort of say, where can we get some money? And so that's why I suggested doing a non-creditable bonus as opposed to giving people a step. But I know that, you know, that, that falls more harshly on leadership. Um, it, but it feels to me like you know, we ought to sort of, with the exception of support staff, um, who I think are probably in the most difficult position, um, I think we ought to sort of generally ask for some sacrifice. And I, I, I'm not saying that I don't want to give leadership any money, because we're asking leadership just like we are the teachers to absorb much higher health care costs. But I'd like to sort of, I'd like everybody to share in some of the burden. And so uh, I also, for example, don't know, and this would be important to me, you know, if, if leadership hasn't gotten a step in a number of years, what's been the history, then that's, that's relevant to me too. Well, I think at least that can be answered now. My question is, and I don't remember your entire spreadsheet, but when you had the bonuses, were they at the level of a full step? because in effect it doesn't count as much since it doesn't go toward retirement or was it at let's say 80 percent like we're doing for the teachers you know i did not go back and also reduce the fringe factor for benefits yeah, but I, I had just suggested making cutting it from to 20k from the, the estimated cost of 50 50 something um, let me find it okay so you're cutting it by two-thirds almost. I, I cut it from 54.9 to 20K, but it would actually be more than that. The savings would be more than that um, because of the, there, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have the benefit. I'm just, and I'm not wedded to that number. Just I'm the not concept wedded, of, I'm just of, trying yeah. to get, I'm trying to not say, you know, no soup for you, but have <laughs> some burden spread on you. Okay, well, Tony, you want to talk about Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, um, I'll try to bring back more data for you. I, we, we have some difficulties on the scale in that, keep in mind, we've been, they're, they're all on our professional side, we've been closing the gap on teacher pay. We have not done that on our leadership scale. And so, I mean, we haven't been looking at their scale in that way. W right now, I can tell you, I have an assistant principal that if she was a, a teacher this year, a 10-month teacher, she would earn just as much as she would uh, as an 11-month assistant principal. We have some issues like that on our scale. So, and I'm not saying it's widespread. We actually have been looking at it this whole week because we do listen when you guys send us things. And we've tried to uh, parse the scale out where we were looking at doing a 20% reduction uh, the same way we had done for the others. And we can do that. It's actually something that we can bring back because um, we had managed to run that. And, but and thank, you, thank you for recognizing the, the challenge with um, trying to to operationalize that that sort of thing because it's it is it is a challenge okay and then the topped out bonuses that would apply to only support staff and leadership yes or are there any teachers, have teachers topped out. okay because we're enhancing the scale okay so for the pe for the people who are topped out for either support staff or leadership that's 76 well what, what sorry would, so what would happen well, is this taking it down it completely? Get, no. Seven, yeah, no. They all yeah. have a seven hundred dollars. It would be. It would. What it would be is. Is initially um, the proposal was if you had been topped out for two or more years that you would get fourteen hundred dollars, and if you had been topped out for one year, you'd get seven hundred dollars, and that was modified to say if you're just topped out, period, you get seven hundred dollars. Uh, the expense is around twelve thousand dollars. This represents the the delta between. Proposal A and Proposal B. So, so this is 700 versus like 14 versus okay. possibly and, and 14. And you know, as, as Phil's made the point about um, 
teacher uh, staff development. This is one of my things that I would love to, if we can hold, if we find an extra seventy six hundred dollars, this is something I'd love to not cut if we get yeah. Uh, we don't have to agree to anything tonight, so let's just put that as a, a question mark okay. mm -hmm. and leave it in because I think that will partly depend on what we want to do on this on the on a possible increase for leadership once we get the new information at the next session. Could, could I um, just one thing? If if this does stay in, Hunter, I calculated a different amount. Just that I, I thought the. Prior amount was 19.7, and it was going to drop to 11.2. So the reduction would be more, but let's just check the figures on that. You you are much closer to that than I am, but I I thought at 16 times a $700 bonus, it was at 11.2. Yeah, um, and that, that in, increased by 8 percent for FICA and workers' comp. Okay. All right. Um, there's one other thing that's associated with that I'd like to put on the sort of in the salary pieces. Um, and I know you guys, I was not here for it, um, the discussion last week about school board salaries. Um, and I, I, you know, I had included in my proposal, my, my intention is to not accept a salary for next year. And it's not dependent on whether the, the city council does or not. So I, I don't know if you can not budget for that, but it's my intention not to take a salary for next fiscal year. I was gonna, it's not, you know, I'm not trying to be altruistic or anything, I was gonna give it to the Falls Church Education Foundation or something anyway. So, but I'd like to, I'd like to have that not included in the budget yep. if that's possible. And Mr. Reitinger, if you would send that, send that to us in writing. I'd so, glad. so if the auditors say how yeah, you didn't pay this school board member, and I say, look, <laughs> that, seriously, that's but, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Thank and you. It, and actually that reminds me of one thing I, I promised I would do tonight to be a shameless shill for the Education Foundation. <laughs> um, May 20th is the gala, so please. Buy tickets. Yeah, I mean it's May already, so please buy tickets. Buy tickets for teachers, but I promised I would push tonight for everybody to do that. So. Yes, exactly. So, all right. Moving on to page 12. All right. Let's look for agreements first. So. How about this? We start with materials and programs and come back up to staff. But didn't we just cover all those things? Some of it I think we did. And Hunter, okay. you and Tony tell us if it's there's anything. It's the staff on the top that is the big yeah, one. Just, yes. It's just that. Well, that is. And then right. you're, you have some of the individualized programs, but I don't think uh, that are down on the bottom under programs where it's just digging deeper into the weeds, like yeah. distinguished scholar. Well, yeah, to me it's the distinguished scholar and the board certified stipends that are okay. the big. You want to start with the? Well, it's whatever the will of the school board is. When, when we have been looking at all of these numbers, um, you could, as we were plugging things in, we could hire one instead of three teachers and have an assistant principal. We could not hire the assistant principal and then have two out of the three teachers unless we find you know some significant reductions. And we did go in and find this extra 60, but it's, Again, you're back to, do you want to charge more for parking? Do you want to charge more for athletic yeah. fees? So, that, so that's why, it, what is the biggest thing we're trying to keep? Is it teachers or is it the principal or? For me, Well, no. It's also the KYP coordinator. That's what this position is going to be. Well, what I can I think it's it, the question though is not can it be done absolutely it can be done it's done in schools all across America that it, that's typical do we want to do it that's a different question um, well whenever the first um, I want to say the first two years Lisa help me if I can remember 11 12 12 13 we had somebody who worked 15 hours a week so it wasn't a full-time assistant until we hired yeah just two years ago and that was because our class sizes were bigger we had gone up over 400 which was that size where we went from 15 hours to actually hiring an assistant. So it's only been there for about two years in the, in the way that it is now. Actually, with Aaron was our first full-time person. Yeah. It's our second year. Maybe before um, we had a separate point class we wanted to Yeah. So when you combine the two, uh, the bills were actually the eight. Well, but it was 15 hours and then, yeah. yeah it, it, the bills did work, sustainability. Well, it, it is, but you're not really, 
when you're looking at assistant principals and you're looking at growth, as the building starts to grow, if you have two assistant principals, that doesn't mean you're sustainable at TJ if you end up with a thousand kids. You're going to still come back and need another assistant. It's all based on student growth. So if we're looking at where they are as a school size and what a principal can do, and a prime example would be uh, as we were interviewing for TJ, for instance, um, you know, the candidates for that position, you know, run elementaries that are between four and 500 students, none of them have assistants. That is what's typical, but that doesn't mean that that's what we want to do, and I fully understand it's, it is a great thing to have in a K-1 building. Right, and if you look at their staffing ratio, they had the highest staffing ratio as far as just adults with children and having a, a full-time assistant in every kindergarten, having a part-time um, para in all of our first grade rooms. We have our specialty, and, I, and I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm just factually, that's where we are. And if we're talking about either classroom teachers or a principal, and if this school board can find a way to fund all of those, we're all for that. Mr. Kimball and I have struggled, and you may be comfortable cutting something that we weren't comfortable to make that decision or bring it to the board. So, um, but if all, all four of those positions are important to the board, then we're going to have to cut something else. So, so if, if the two thing would be is there you know we've heard about enrollments increasing and, and all of that and I've been up there in the morning and seen them come through and I'd be terrified if I had to deal with 10 or 15 of those and you know I mean 146 150 I'm just thinking in an em and that was the first thing that came to my mind in an emergency and I'm not I'm doing this just as a parent in an emergency if you have that number of kids and or what the principal is out sick or travel or something, you know, what do you do without an assistant? That's what I'm trying to understand. And and, and I'm just you know, especially you know. a backup plan for that. Yeah. I mean that, that yeah. shouldn't be just, you know, oh if that something happens they don't have a, they don't have something planned ahead. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> like I mean I I think it's I, I I want that principle there. I, I I personally do. Can I just ask real quick? Is that salary set in stone? Do we have to go with that 130? I know that includes benefits, but is, do we have to go with that amount? Well, that's the budget. I mean, I, you need at least count on, on that as a budgeted amount. That's why it's plugged in. I mean, that's, I mean so there's no. Well, way. if you think of it as a teacher we, at 106. Do we have the, the principal, the, the assistant principal? That's a definite, like, they're, right now there's someone that if she, if she her second year, they've had a full-time yeah. assistant. Yeah, but is, is this isn't her, per se, right? What we, what we have told the three assistant principals is that we would use them differently. It doesn't mean somebody's losing their job, but we would have to reconfigure what we're doing. And we have frozen a couple other positions just until the school board gets through this to there's, decide what you want to do. There's three assistant principals? Or there's one at Mount Daniel, and there are two at TJ. And T, ah. TJ must stay with two. So it really depends on... Um, kind of how, how we could reconfigure where at TJ you might have somebody doing 0.5 principal and 0.5 reading specialist, somebody else doing 0.5 principal, 0.5 something else. How many kids are at TJ right now? TJ is uh, just under 800. It hovers around 780. And Mount Daniel? Uh, right now they've been about 370, right around 370. About half? Okay. Okay. I just don't that's I'll okay. Question, I just didn't know if that was a flexible thing. I'm not trying to tell you to change your sure. pay scale for principals. I, I just want to I just want you to know that the other thing I wanted to know is it possible to give the para staff one of their professional days is one thing I'd like to consider doing if we can do that. And then everything on the next page, I say no to athletic fees, no to increased student parking fees, and okay to everything else. And on that note, I'm leaving. I just wanted to put my two cents in before. I won't you go have. home because my bed is calling me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very Thank much, you everyone. Thank Thanks for your hard work tonight. Is that me? Yeah. Oh.
All right, so okay. un unlike the, the rest of the stuff where we're agreeing on the cuts, I, I'm in this in this instance, I'd like to keep the assistant principal position. That's just me. I don't know how the rest feel about it. Like I said before, and you know, I, I said I don't want to. I'm gonna take my ball and go home. But this is a red line in the sand for me. I'm just. I, I. It's really important for me to have that second. I think you need two two leadership positions, with the things that we expect from our teachers. I think we. You know, and I've. I think. I think our school principals and their staffs are, at least as at least as overworked as our teachers are, and so I'm not gonna. I, it's it's absolutely critical to me that we not cut the half and half assistant principal PYP coordinator at Mount Daniel. Um, and I'm, I, I don't support cutting the two paraprofessional days either. In fact, I, I probably support that less than the assistant principal one, just because I think you know, that, that's, that's, that's causing salary reductions to the most vulnerable of our employees. And I think the paras, I know it's impolitic to say this, are terribly undercompensated already for what they provide at Mount Daniel and other places. So. I don't, I don't, I don't want to take, you know, I, I'd much rather do other things, um, including cut professional development if that's the only choice, as opposed to losing those two things. Yeah, and I would say that my, my list of, the number I, I've been trying to find is 282-100. You know, I mean, that's, that's the number I've been trying to see. That's the elementary teacher, the para, the para days, and the assistant vice principal. I mean, those are my, those are the people that were, those are the things I've been trying to, the number I've been trying to get to. Can I ask if the assistant principal, instead of the PYP duties, can have some classroom duties? Can support? Sorry? I mean, we talked about either three teachers or an assistant principal or something like that. You know, so could they spend some time in the classroom? Um, or, I, I don't what, know. One of the things we did ask them, and, and and the answer was no, was that there is a point, is it a point six, I believe, math specialist, uh, point seven that's frozen. And we asked if we, if there was any interest in taking that and applying that to the assistant principal um, and even either not having the math specialist, which Lisa felt like they'd probably be okay without that. Um, but they didn't, they were not interested in that. It, I mean, it doesn't mean you couldn't look at that position and do something with it. It's, that's one of the reasons it's frozen in case we needed it. I guess my question would be the, the math thing at Mount Daniel. How is that a heavy comp component of? And I know the kids have to learn to add. Okay, okay. And it's a point seven. How do we get these fractions? And, and, and so they, you know, I know that the Mount Daniel staff has asked a few times about could we do a fifty percent reduction in salary increases? And I think I mean is that that's completely off the table because last week we agreed to the one ten. Floor, right? Yeah, I mean, we pretty much took that off the table ourselves last week. Unless somebody wants to make a push, but I mean, the whole point there was for hiring decisions and being able to go out to people. Yeah. The administration said. I don't know. Really I don't know if it's worth just plug. It's just having the ability to plug it into a scenario, or not. You know, if we're looking at a really broad range of things, we say, well, there's that's a that's an option. I mean, I don't. I bring it up because because they have brought it to us as an option and um, consider it. Sorry, I'm losing my Tony. <laughs> yeah, I mean the only thing. I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead, Lauren. Before you, I get they brought it up as well, and I think that was a good for that building. But I would want to hear what other building staff would want to say with that because that does have an impact across the board. That's one building making that recommendation versus hearing it from multiple buildings making that that making that same recommendation. So I, I I have hesitations doing that. And then my one other within this red block uh, that I would would offer up and then would be potential is to to take the contingency down to a hundred thousand and but and and and. And again, I would, it's, we, everything has to be there. And I think we do have to then make that effort. Um, we are partners that the school, that the city council has before said that we can come to them for those type of things. Uh, and we have to take them at their word and if, at their word that they are willing to do that. I, I 
I would, I would not go back and reconsider the $110,000. I think that decision was made. No. I was not here, but I support it. You know, I, I, I'm, you know, one of the ways I always check myself is, you know, you know I ask myself, what would Kathy Haleko do? Um, and uh, so I'm, it's, I'm cautious about saying when she's suggesting larger cuts, but I, I just, it, 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 it's unpalatable to me at a point in time when we're sticking um, teachers with significant increases in health care and um, unbelievable housing costs to not, to, to consider cutting that more than 20%. So I think that was the right decision. I think we can get where we need to without looking at that again. So I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't waste the effort. Um, you know, I like Lawrence. I'm glad Michael's not here because I don't have to duck when he punches at me. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm mildly along with trying to cut the contingency further simply because you know, I, I think it's better to sort of plan ahead and I think you know, it helps us get that assistant principal and maybe the elementary teachers that we want or the half a gifted specialist. And so I'd, I'd rather have thinner margins and then depend on the goodwill of the city council rather than trying to plan for it in advance. I, and the rest of the stuff here, you know, I, I think I would take as painful as reducing the um, National Board Certified Teacher Stipends and the Distinguished Scholar Program are um, and the Elementary Screens uh, Program, for example. Yeah, those, are, those are all very, very nice things. Um, I would love to save them, but you know, we're, not in the, we're not in the nice things save category anymore. We're in the you know, try and lose a finger instead of a hand. Um, so, um, now, I, uh, now that Michael's back, I said nothing about the contingency. <laughs> Look, and trust me, I've, I've gotten the I've gotten the whack and having phone conversations with Mr. Ankuma about that. Um, yeah, I'd say there's no consensus on the contingency, but we've got two people who would like to take it down to 100. Which is the million? No, 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 it's seventeen percent. So it's. I mean, it's in the, in their operating budget. It's it's their fund balance yeah. because yeah. what they do is they do a budget amendment for themselves and they just tap into their contingency. Yeah. I mean, I mean their their fund balance. Yeah. I, it, it, it would be a little more than it is now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it would, it would, it would be 70 yeah. percent of about 50,000. I mean, I think I, I don't like the idea of taking it down below 150, especially when we possibly have a, a huge kindergarten class coming in and we need it for a teacher and a para. I mean, technically, do we have three opposed to two? Um, well, no, I, I just think to me this is something for the next time because it's clear that we've got at least an even divide if not you know four three but we just don't know which four and which three uh, i think we i think we've got consensus to take it down at least 50 or you know, whatever is here uh, right and then the question yeah. is whether to drop it another third yeah no taking it down the the 46 is agreed so back back up to the top People are agreed on reducing the part-time gifted. I mean, that's something we talked about before, but just making. Okay. I would struggle to say that. I mean, I wanted it on the list to see where we get as we okay. do other things. Okay. If that's at all possible. I'm, I'm not. I'm not willing to throw that one over. On, okay. on my breakdown, and I know we haven't done all the things that I suggested. Mm -hmm. I was able to say that. I Leave it in the base.
and the presentable amount is very I feel I still feel that I want to have Okay, so people want to keep both and then what about the first grade para? First grade is just not necessarily first grade. Okay, so sorry. Just want to make sure sorry. Initially, sorry. That we just don't know where that's going to fall. At and this actually point. if you just make a decision on the teachers, that probably helps. Are you are you looking at one, two or three? So if we had in here to reduce one teacher, are we talking about two as a land out of three? Or are you trying to hire both? Because and the, then you're hiring all three. Then you need to keep the pair in because that means you're hiring first grade. And the three were two elementary and it's um, there's actually it's first grade, third grade, and fifth grade. How do you do that? That's well that's we two. we kept one in and then you have the option out of the three we're trying to add for growth. Do you want to take out one of those? Do you want to take out two of those? Um, okay, but I mean the point is the third one's not on here. Right, at the all. third one is funded because we, we did the third one is, is in your budget right now. We're, we're not look, we weren't looking at that as part of the nine hundred and twelve thousand dollar reduction. We knew that you didn't want to reduce all three. So we were assuming that you didn't want to reduce all three. So we agreed on all right. So that was and then we agreed on the element one that that got grown. Well, one is already in. So you're talking about this one yeah. as opposed to the one that's exactly. not even here exactly that's my point so it's just agreement are, are we trying to hire the principal we're trying to hire the, all the teachers we're because we're kind of back where we were let me let me say we kind of hire the principal we well keep it in the budget keep right, it in that the, yes yeah, oh, yes yes okay. yeah. the because then it's not a reduction happens. so that may yeah, but then it's not a reduction so okay. that's where we're looking at Early on, and again, when we run all these numbers, that's why I didn't want Hunter to do it right now, because we need to run the numbers and really see where we are based on what the input you've given us. But initially, we couldn't keep the principal unless we cut elementary teacher one and two. So we were hiring one of the three teachers. It doesn't mean that's where we'll be when we're all said and done. When I was playing with the numbers, I didn't cut the principal, but I couldn't find a way to save all three teachers. I just, right. I didn't get, I didn't get there with the numbers. So. You know, this is sort of like the, you know, in the, the last in, first out, you know, in, among the, the big ticket items. I, I, would, I would agree that we could not hire one of the elementary teachers in the para if that was the only way to make the number that we had to make. But that's among the very last things I'd include. Yeah. Okay, and in effect, the elementary teacher two and the para at the bottom would go together. I thought the para went with the, well, well the para goes with the Mount Daniel it, it, slot, right? It does, but it also depends on where we, add, where we add the teacher. If you add the first grade teacher, we had built in a first grade para. Will we need a para for special education? Possibly. So, I mean, if it's sitting in there and it's funded and you don't add the first grade teacher, we may very well have a move-in student who needs a para at TJ or anywhere else, but that one is probably... If you're not going to hire a teacher, reducing that one means that it's either going to be contingency or we're looking for cost savings in September when we have all of our new hires to add the para. That's we'd have to scramble to find the 16, but it's not as difficult to find 16 as it is 106. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Phil, you're basically saying admit that trying to do three elementary teachers and an assistant principal is just unrealistic. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I haven't found a way to do it yet. But we are, yeah. there are additional, there are things that, that Tony and Hunter came up with that I didn't find in terms of dollars. So I, it's sort of, I want to see the stack, you know, and that this is at the very end of the stack and sort of the, you know, the last thing to be cut. But I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to take my ball and go home if, I'm going to agree to a cut of an elementary school teacher and a, and a para if that's the only way to make the money that we need to make. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, I, th I think at this point, that's about as far as we can go on that because we've got a lot of new moving parts, and honestly, we don't know what the total that we've mm -hmm. cut tonight is. Um, well, and, and also, you've got things like security camera that's going to come off this that was in. So right. Well, no, that's yeah. just it. We've got yeah. things that are going in and out, and we don't know what the right. bottom line is. So, on page 13, Group D. Athletic fees, student parking fees, facility rental fees. So I'll be Scrooge. I'm for all of those. I'm glad Margaret's not here to now punch me, but <laughs> she knows where you live. I'll stand for, I'll stand for Margaret. I still, I still, all those things are charge fees. 
But I think, but with the athletics fees, as a person who plays sports throughout, we always did. So it's it's not that unusual for me to see athletes having to pay those fees because I don't know, unless you uh, private schools that potentially that don't. But I do not know a public school system that they do not charge fees for playing sports. Okay. If we look at other things that may be out there, maybe of the students, of the fees that, of things that maybe students are involved with, if you're trying to even the playing field, I'm, 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 I can entertain that, but I don't know of any school system that does not charge fees for, for playing sports. You might ask Mr. Horn, he might have a good idea if that's. Tom, so any, no anything idea. to say? I mean, the other possibility is would we want to reduce the cuts as opposed to eliminating the cuts? Can you speak to the fees and if everybody's still doing that or not? Yeah. Um, athletic fees grew across the country and in Virginia at the same time that we implemented them. Some of those divisions that implemented them and, and implemented them at the same time we did have since removed them. Um, and taken back that budgetary responsibility. Not all have, though, as you can imagine, once something like this lands in a budget, it's hard to get it back out. Um, as far as other activities, um, one of the significant differences as you study our budget is that there are costs associated with athletics that don't exist for the student activities. And, and as the strongest advocate for the student athletes in our division, um, I can say, and, you, and hopefully it has some some weight that there are costs associated with our athletic program that don't exist in those other activities where we also don't charge for fees. Like Officials, uh, for one. Um, transportation is another. Um, the significant equipment costs, recertification of equipment. Um, so uh, transportation, I mean, is it because things like band and others raise their own money? Well, they don't travel nearly as much as we do. I mean, we well, have- as much on a constant basis, that's true. Yeah, I mean, our, the, the cost for our teams to travel um, 10 or 12 times each team, right, right. In three seasons is significantly more than any other student activity. In fact, maybe more than all other student activities um, for any single team. So there, there are significant costs which justify a fee for athletics where it would be more challenging to justify a fee for an activity. Um, and I think it was appropriately said earlier that there are activities that have costs. Mm -hmm. it, they're just not directly attributed to something, to a school board cost center. Um, you know, the robotics folks have to raise their own money. So whether it's a parent writing a check to participate in robotics or whether it's kids that are out doing a lot more fundraising than our athletic programs do, um, the costs are different. So the school board has taken on a significant cost to run an athletic program the size of ours. Fees are justified in offsetting that cost more so than it would be for an activity like Model UN, as a for instance. Do, do families who can't afford those costs, do they get subsidized? We have a complete waiver system. Um, it, it's uh, utilized by approximately 8% of our student athletes. Um, it, it's not a rigorous process. It's simply a request made of the department, and, and waivers are granted. Well, and that also applies. And that comes back up my issue anyways a little bit of that one. Because that's one thing that Aaron and I were over at the uh, uh, I was asking about the parking fees and people who need relief. And when we, you and I were over, you know, getting interviewed by the lasso, by the way, really sharp kids. It was kind of scary. Um, <laughs> We were talking about it, and one of our concerns was, you know, if you raise it, does that, in effect, just penalize people who don't have as much money? And Tony said, you know, we do have the, the reduced cost, and we do have waivers. So, you know, for both of these, we need to keep fairness in mind, and I, I think as schools we are. And this is, I'm probably going off subject here, but that's one of my big issues a little bit with that we've had this conversation before. I get it that there are people who cannot afford some of the fees, but I came from a family who did not have a lot of money, and I participated in sports, and they I paid those fees that my parents made sure they put the money back to know and plan that I was going to play football or I was going to run track or whatever. 
So I just, I just, I don't fully go all the way there to say that if you that that planning can't take place with folks who have less money when they know their kids want to participate in something. So I I, I am a fan of the re reducing the fees, but. I don't necessarily fully subscribe to completely eliminating. Well, no, it was I don't think anybody was talking about completely eliminating the fees. It was reducing or eliminating the increase in fees. So I think the real question is, are we at the point where we're all tired enough where we would just want to take each 10,000 and split it in half and make everybody unhappy? I'm or not there yet. We ought, we, ought to, we ought to reduce driving. People can bike to work. We want to be a green city. We want to be a walkable city. Uh, that this is a this is a pure nice to have. And if you ask me, ten thousand dollars so people can kids can park their cars, or ten thousand dollars for teacher training, I'll take teacher training any time. Charge the kids. But, you know, I'm happy to get criticized for that. I just think I think it's fair, given the other things we're looking at. I the facility point. rental fees. I feel five thousand is. If that's what the administration thinks we can get out of it, I'm for that. I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to talk about athletic fees. I don't want to. I'm a big supporter of school sports. I don't want to overcharge people, but we're spreading a lot of pain around right now. One of the things you know, we've had members in the public participation say, well, if the school, you know, if the city council is not giving enough money to schools to fund them, then your parents ought to give more through the Paul Church Education. Well, at least if you charge more fees for activities that cost a lot of money, there's and, and then you've got a waiver system, you've got a means to relatively charge people fairly for what they're doing. And that, you know, I don't want to make light of it, although it's, it's always tempting to laugh at the 11.30 at night, but it, it strikes me as reasonable. And so, you know, I, I'll go with 5,000 or 10,000, I'm not going to scream about it one way or the other, but I think raising athletic fees Places where the costs are actively associated with those sports strikes me as a reason for our current system. Uh, uh, who's paying the facility? Renters. I mean, uh, well, it, 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 okay, but not, does this include city? No. No. It would not. Okay, how much do we get in fees overall? Any idea? Oh, I'll, I'll have, to, have to go check that because we, we, we assess them, you know, to make sure that our personnel costs are covered versus just the flat out rent revenue. So I, I can get to that. Okay. okay, yeah, no, I'm just curious how much of a percentage increase this is. So yeah, for, for next time. Okay, um, and I think on E, we have gone through everything. I think you've won it out. What? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's my fault. Um, okay. So in terms of, of groupie, just for clarification, is, is, is the board okay with, with the groupie items being included or are you factoring this? There's no fight left. Right. Well, <laughs> well, groupie, we already went through yeah. dues, and we're going to have more of those. Um, it wasn't it was okay. The, good. Okay. Right. Very good. The foundation. Yeah, no, except for the foundation. Except for the foundation. Right. Everything was... In there and that's a new thing right and and some of them have numbers that'll change like conferences and workshops that's the aim to do 15 percent that was from the first page right so but yeah everything else we've already talked about right and we we did talk about maybe increasing the or having a reduction in non state grant technology right that's on the list too. right yeah that's the one to get more information on what we can actually do okay so as much as I hate to say, let's hold this over for another week, I don't think it would be fair to staff to try to cram in a work session on the weekend. I, mean, I don't know what you think, but I mean, we need to pass this by the end of May, right? Well, not by June. OK. 
Okay. But, yeah, but in terms of All right, so, but no, no, today's the, today's no, the third. If we meet on the 10th, well, if we meet, we're going to meet on the 10th. We have another work session like this, hopefully over a much smaller universe. And then I would hope to aim to vote on the 24th. So we'll hold it. No, sorry, 17th. Yeah, if we meet the 10th, do we do it like, all right, so you can talk about that. Right, I just, I just want to be realistic. I think if we try to do a work session and come to a final conclusion next week, we'll be very unhappy. Can we, and so, Hunter, what can you give us, sort of help us frame what we have or what we agreed on and what is still left? Yeah. <laughs> new, new list. Yeah. Yeah, and reach out because I've got a ton of notes. I'm sure everybody does. There are going to be some things that are going to be unclear from tonight. So we just need to, you know, cooperate and questions. remember. Still right. Had, still had, I, did, I think I did, on some other topic, we talked about categories. Can we have sort of something like what we've agreed, what, what you know, maybe some common show of what we've all agreed on and confirm, and then, what, you know, what's in the middle and like that? Yeah. I, I mean, to a certain, it's red, yellow, green. A little outside the standard of review on this one, but if, if you could just, if the list of cuts could be actually a small Excel spreadsheet sure. that just had the lines <coughs> and figures so we could play, play with, with it, yep. and in rough priority order from most agreed to least agreed, yep. then we could sort of have the figure of 9, 12, whatever on the side, and we could kind of, you know, adjust it. I also, John, I, 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 I know there's some tough issues to work through, but I, maybe maybe it's because I'm going to be here next week, but not the week after that. I'd very much like to try to get it done next week and give the school system a little more chance to get things resolved. I think I think we're down to a few key issues now, and it'll be I hope quicker next week because we won't have to go through the you know, a big packet of data. It'll be one sheet where we go through it. I would hope with some supporting. Especially if we can get it ahead of time. That's okay. Yeah. We could build this. Yeah, let's let's let staff look at it tomorrow and sort of see what's realistic in terms of getting us things because if we could get it far enough in advance, I think Tuesday would be reasonable. My concern is we're not going to be able to get it far enough in advance and if we don't, then the public doesn't and then in effect we've got to roll everything out and expect people to absorb it at the same time we are and then we vote and I would Rather, well, I, I I'd rather not do it that to way. Try and get everything out by Thursday if we're going to do it by next Tuesday, because I mean, Friday at the latest, because people need the weekend to go through it. And right, and my my only problem with that is, in effect, it's Wednesday right now. Right, we'll, we'll do our very best, which we always we do try sure. to post the Thursday yeah. Friday, but it just until we really get into looking at the numbers, because we I'm assuming you want scenarios that like you want to. I mean, are you just wanting them? In order, are you wanting scenarios that actually get rid of 912,000? Uh, yeah. I, I don't need scenarios. I, I just want a, a list, list just a list where right. we can sort of, yep. and because I mean, they, at least for me, they fall into three categories, right? The the givens, mm -hmm. the stuff that is really, really painful, but is essentially a given too. Yep. And then that last category of stuff, you're like, what can we do? What can we add? How do we save these things? Yeah, well, hopefully that was the one thing that came out of tonight is we have those in categories, which doesn't make the last category that is going to be the hardest any easier to fight over, but hopefully at least we know it's not everything next time. Yeah, and, and I would also, if people haven't gone through this, go through it, because I've got things I'm going to send questions on that weren't in here as to whether they're possible savings or not, or if it's another... You know, can we delay VRS? And Tony humors me and sort of pats me on the hand and says, oh, nice try. So anybody else have any last things to say? All right, thank you.